It's Friday, February 2nd, 2024, and this is the Talk Film Society podcast. I am your host, Marcelo Pico, Editor-in-Chief of Talk Film Society. And with me, as usual, for this awards season series, it's my co-host. She's back, folks. It's Siobhan Irving. Hello, Siobhan. Hey, Marcelo. Um, uh, before anything else gets said, is thank you for bringing me back. Yeah. Um, I, I, I know I messed up really bad. <laughs> what? Okay. Uh, last so, week. Yeah. F- uh, before we bring it, our, our guest, you know, uh, yeah. we're, we're, let's, let, let's do uh, a, a quick recap of what happened last week. So Siobhan, explain yourself. Uh, last week we were doing the best supporting actor, uh, category, and it also was the same day as the Oscar nominations getting announced. So Marcelo and I woke up bright and early that day to, um, uh, record a live uh, overview of the live reactions of the, uh, of the live reactions of the Oscar nominations getting announced, and then we were going to come back later with our guest, uh, the real Matt C. Matt um, Carrion. Matt Carrion, and uh, uh, and we and do the best supporting actor at the rest of that episode. Um, but what happened is I got really tired and. <laughs> I fell asleep and slept through that recording. <laughs> the entire recording. And didn't make it to the recording. And then I listened to the episode later and it was like really good even <laughs> without me. And I got really scared that you were not going to want to bring me back anymore and you were just going to want to have Matt on every week. Well, here's the thing. I've already done a hundred episodes of a podcast with Matt Curion. Uh, that that was the Hey What You Watching podcast. Uh, go to talkfromsociety.com slash heycast to listen back to those episodes. No affiliation with our Hey What Is It that You Have Been Watching <laughs> segment, by the yeah, way. Yeah, which, which will happen later. Um, but no, I mean, it, I'm going to be honest. Uh, podcasting with Matt felt like a breeze. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> Matt Curion is a busy man. So, um, you know, I, I it's great to have him sure. on every once in a while, but I just don't want to bug him. And like Like I said at the end of that episode... He can be the Joan Rivers to this podcast, where he can jump in whenever he can. In case Siobhan, you want to take a nap, that's fine. You know, go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. um, but no, I mean, it's great having you back. So, all forgiven. Uh, okay. Again, thank you. It worked out because Matt just stepped in, was the guest host. That ended up being a great episode uh, for all of us. Okay, great episode. And now, it's time for another great episode. And by the way, we'll get to your picks from last week. Siobhan, I'm not going to let mm. you sneak away and not tell us your best supporting actor picks for twenty. That was really why I, that's really why I didn't show up. I was too scared to say him. <laughs> we but will get not, to you're that. You're not letting me off the hook. I respect it. We're, we're going we're gonna to get to you and those picks here in a second. But before that, let's introduce our guest who's been very respectful. Sometimes guests like to jump in and say things before they're introduced, but not this <laughs> guest. He knows his place. <laughs> Uh, our guest, uh, professional grant writer from Dallas, Texas. He was a guest on the Dream a Little Deeper podcast here on the Talk from Society Podcast Network, and a, a favorite on on the Discord, uh, on the Talk from Society Discord. Which where can somebody go if they want to go to that, Siobhan? Uh, talkfilmsociety.com dot com slash Discord. You may have heard us mention his name many times, reading off his suggestions at the end at the end of the episode, like we do. Yes, welcome to the show. Joey Hamilton. Hello, Joey. Hey, everybody. I'm thrilled to be here. Hey, Joey. great having you. Uh, long time coming, like for a few weeks. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, fair, yeah. fair, fair. I know uh, 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 this has been in the works, particularly for this episode, which is the best animated films yes. of 2023. Um, a, we'll talk- a topic of which I have many great passions. Big, yes, yes. Big animation guy here. That is why you're on this episode. Uh, you claimed it. This was a given. I'm glad this is happening now. Um, and the movie, I, 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 I'm going to turn to Siobhan. Siobhan, how mm. do we? How did we end up with Joey? Through, you know, from your vantage point, and how did we end up talking about the movie of the week this week? So I know Joey. I have known him for a few years now, playing uh, video games with him. For, uh, in part- from another Discord, in particular, the video game Destiny Two. Yes, yes. Uh, Joey plays a warlock. Um, I am a hunter. Uh, 
which means I and keep people many, alive and throw fire yes. and, and we've done so Shiv many runs around. And and, we're we're yeah. su- such good friends. And I know, I know, uh, I know Joey to be the most passionate <laughs> and knowledgeable person about uh, animation uh, that I have ever heard of. <laughs> Uh, ever very kind. very kind. Um, he he really 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 uh, knows animation and watches it all watches it of all forms, you know, all the time. And uh, like when I knew we had a best animated episode to do, I wanted to do this last year, and I think yes. something got in the way. Yes, um, <laughs> a long time coming. But but yeah, uh, I, I like when I thought of best animated, I was like, there's no other person in my mind that could do this. I ah. need to get Joey. Yeah. Um, so why the movie of the week? I'm going to turn to Joey. Was it your sure. choice? And also, what is it? I'm it was let, my choice. I'm going to let you reveal it. What, what, what's the movie of the week we're talking about this week? Sure. Well, we will be talking about uh, the modern masterpiece, Hayao Miyazaki's Spirited Away. There we go. Yeah. Best uh, animated feature film winner. Um, yes. 2003? Yeah. Uh, I believe it was released in 2002, which means it would have been the 2003 Oscars. There you go. Um, But yeah, there we go. We'll talk about all of that. Spurted Away, uh, our favorite animated films of the year of 2023. Talk about that later. Um, But first, I think that was, uh, you know, Siobhan, I think that was the good, that that was a good first segment. That was who are we, okay? We've introduced a guest. We've established you, Siobhan. We've established me. Um... Uh, oh, how about this? One more question before we move on uh, to the next segment. We're talking... This This is the award season podcast series, okay? We're talking <laughs> Oscars. We are okay? indeed. Uh, Joey, your honest opinions okay. on awards and more specifically the Oscars. Do you care at all? Do you just think they're frivolous? What, what are your thoughts on the Oscars? Well, uh, well, obviously, Oscars. Hollywood's biggest night. Hollywood's I mean, we all agree. Night. Oh, here on this Hollywood's podcast. Biggest thing, of course. Um, I think uh, in my life of watching the Oscars, there have been Oscar years that I've been very excited about. Uh, there have been Oscar years where, quite frankly, I have not seen anything and just kind of casually follow. Uh, this year in particular, 2023 was a huge year for me for movies. Uh, I watched nearly 200 movies in 2023, uh, which I think is the most I've ever watched in a year is I'm just feeling it this year. I was really loving movies. Uh, and as a result this year, I've been paying attention to the race. I've, I have some favorites. I, you know, have some blind spots that I'm hoping to fill before the actual ceremony. Um, in general, I think that the Oscars, uh, is as much a money and marketing game as it is an actual, you know, measure of merit of great cinema, but it's an exciting space for, underseen movies to suddenly get a huge bump for great beloved movies to be celebrated. I I love that the Oscars exists and I want the Oscars to be great every year. It isn't always. Yeah. Uh, In in particular, in this category of best animated feature, this is one of the most exciting years for best animated feature, in my opinion, in some time. I'm very excited uh, in terms of that this year. Uh, Siobhan, I'm going to turn to you. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on the Oscars? (laughs) Uh, shaping up to be a pretty exciting year, Marcelo. Yeah. So we had our nominations episode last year. I didn't get to do much commentary on the nominations that happened, right? We'll get to that. Last week. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Okay, never mind. Well, let me just say, um, <laughs> uh, I- I've given my thoughts in general on the Oscars in the past. So let me say this year, Siobhan, uh, my do you general think thoughts. 2023 was a was a uh, golden year for the Oscars. The 2024 Oscars, uh, it looks like they're about to be another golden year. If well, you, I, you know, me. okay, whatever. I was referring to the 2023. Yeah, slate yeah, of films I know what you were trying to present in 2024. I, I get it, and I fucked with you. Okay, and now you don't even know how to handle it. Th- this is all going to be cut out. That's how I'm going to handle it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I have that power. <laughs> Wait, okay. So there, there, there are a few dangling threads which we'll get to right now because we're doing the news uh so we're recording this in advance i don't really have any news uh for, for the next few episodes we're, we're, we're going to record in advance of the release dates uh mostly because i'll be in new york 
uh, uh, mid-February, so I want to bank some episodes. So really, I mean, I, I have nothing planned in terms of like, it's, it's been the Oscar nominations uh, um, responses, the, the reactions, okay? Hillary Clinton tweeted about Barbie. Okay, who gives a shit? Oh, yes. Uh, she sure did. <laughs> I'm not gonna. Uh, I I think I've said all I need to say really for now about the the, the Barbie snubs and quotes. I said that last week, you know. Um, but I'm gonna turn to Siobhan. You really didn't say much about the 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 the, the Barbie thing. I think you just you know kind of kind of mentioned one or two things in the uh, in the segment we recorded, but not to get too far deep deep into it, Siobhan. Your thoughts on the Barbie thing? Is it insane? Is just, just people to shut up? Uh, uh, People, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay, people's reactions to Margot Robbie and Greta Gerwig, um, I do believe they are indeed insane. Particularly, particularly Margot Robbie. I, I never even expected that. Uh, and Greta Gerwig, I get like I guess like the the female director thing, but you got Justine Triette. Don't ignore her, um, and don't ignore that you know American Ferrera got America Ferrera got nominated for the same movie. Ryan Gosling got nominated for the same movie. Like people are this, this movie got plenty of nominations. I don't know why it's a robbery that it didn't get these two. I I haven't understood that from, from the second one. Uh, And people definitely took it too far, but I also think people are taking the backlash to it too far. So now it's just become annoying to talk about 100%. So yeah. uh, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Exactly. Yeah. I just wanted to give you that platform just to say, you know, what you say and we can move on. But Joey, you have the same opportunity here now. You just qu- give your quick thoughts. We don't need to, you know, you know, dig sure. too deep into this. But Joey, your thoughts on this Barbie. You can if you thing. want, though. Yeah, sure. I mean, my 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 quick thoughts is that uh, it was sort of exhausting discourse, but I appreciate that it was uh centered around a movie that clearly a lot of people love uh and that it is and a movie i certainly really enjoyed when i saw it at the theater um and uh i will say that as a fan of the movie musical um some of the musical sequences in barbie in particular i'm just ken which i've been thrilled has been you know uh recognized as a really great musical sequence in a movie between the nominations of best original song and just like that, like old school, a bunch of people dancing and singing in sync, looking amazing, which is everything from the, the musicians behind the film, Greta Gerwig's excellent directing all the performances from all those Ken's. I love that sequence. I hope Ryan Gosling has the guts to sing that song at the Oscars. (laughs) I don't know if he will. I think that would be, hilarious and wonderful and everybody would cheer it'd be great yeah and by the way i think we're free to talk about barbie you know the movie itself you know we can mm-hmm. keep talking about that but just the the snub discourse that's insane i i'm i'm i'm, I'm complete agreement with you joey i love barbie i'm eager to see it again in the theater they just re-released it here in town um one of my favorite movies of the year yeah. but discourse is exhausting um Indeed. okay joey turning back to you the nominations. Okay, we can sp- we can jump to the best animated film, but your your thoughts on the nominations overall? And do you you know other than Barbie, which you said you like, any any favorite nominees this year? Sure. Um, I just saw American Fiction yesterday, and I really liked that. Uh, Jeffrey Wright is one of my favorite uh, living actors, and so I was thrilled to see him get a really meaty part. Uh, and to be recognized by the Academy as a nomination for Best Actor. Um, uh, I mean, Oppenheimer and Killers of the Flower Moon, two totemic epics released this year that I both greatly enjoyed. Uh, it's been great hearing all your your Killers of the Flower Moon praise here, Shiv, on the pod recently. Uh, Thank you. I, yeah. I really hope Lily Gladstone wins Best Actress uh, in particular, I think she's running a great campaign. I think her performance in that movie is incredible. I was bummed no Penelope Cruz for Best Supporting Actress yeah. in Ferrari, a movie I loved. <laughs> yeah, that 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 one especially hurt. I mean, you know, we talk about snubs forever, but like that yeah. one in particular, I'm like, ah, she really did deserve a nomination. I know she's won already, yes. sure, but that's a fantastic performance in a in a in a great movie that yeah. I don't think got any nominations, which is kind of insane too. Um, I believe that is true. Yeah. yeah, that and and Iron Claw, two yeah. two movies I loved that got no no nominations. Wild, um, wild. Yeah, yeah. 
I think I liked Maestro more than most, but I understand the sort of uh, <laughs> Maestro as the lesser of many of these other films discourse right now yeah. in Oscars chat. Um, I did like it. I think I went in hoping I would like it, and then I did. Uh, it has not shined as brightly in my mind post seeing it, but I definitely enjoyed the experience of watching it. And in particular moments like the on the town dance sequence early in the movie during the black and white section, you know, all kinds of things. I could talk about any of these things forever. Um, But yeah, it's uh, an exciting, if not from my understanding, somewhat predictable Oscars race this year in that a lot of great movies came out and those great movies are being recognized as great movies. And they're just very exciting. Uh, now I'm turn to Siobhan. Now here's your chance, Siobhan. Okay, you've had time to think. Okay, we we, we reacted to them live as they were happening, but now you've had, you know, several days now. It's it's Sunday yes. post uh, Oscar nominations Tuesday. Siobhan, your thoughts now on the nominees? Um, still in the same place. I think they are good. I'm not too upset about anything. Um, in particular, um, I think if we're talking snubs and flubs, um, my biggest snub is one I pointed out at the time, uh, which is the uh, <clears throat> Killers of the Flower Moon not getting an adapted screenplay. Yeah, agreed. Also, uh, I mean, we're here to talk about it, but you know, I'm I'm a little sad about um, at, at least one omission in Best Animated Film. Yes. Um, I don't know if I should even say it or not. Just say it. Just say it. Just say it. I, 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 oh, look, okay, you know, call me a little baby all you want. Baby. Okay, Marcelo. I just please. said it. I just said it. You're, You're a little, a little I'm baby. A, I'm, okay. Yeah, I mean, like, we'll, I, I'm a little baby. We'll talk about babies liked, later in the show. And I liked the Super Mario Brothers movie, Mario. Did you just call me Mario? <laughs> I did. <laughs> On accident. <laughs> that's thing of the show. That's a, that's in the show. <laughs> Mario, I, I like the Super Mario, and I, I wish it would have got in there. I don't know. It would have made me happy. Uh, what? Don't have to win. I don't care. I, I understand. Is Suzume probably a better movie? Sure. Is Robot Dreams probably a better movie? I'm sure it is. I don't care. I don't care. I like will, my Mario movie, Mario. We will talk about it more. I'm sure um, later. But I didn't care for Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> I'll just say it now. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm it sorry. Is a movie, it is a movie I like that has many things they did way better than I expected. Uh, it's not in my top five animated of the year. It was a big year for animation. A lot of great animated movies came out. Yeah. Sure. But sure. sure. I, I'm sure Shivani had Jack Black's song. a national treasure. I'll say that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> why, I, why, why was Peaches left off best song? How about mm. that? How about at least that? Because it's 30 seconds and... It's, come on, it's come on. They sold the vinyl of it. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're, you're not going to get one over on... Um, uh, let's see who's nominated. American Symphonies, It Never Went Away. Come on. Yeah, or Diane Warren, for Christ's sake. you got to always <laughs> nominate her For the Cheetos year. movie, right? Yeah. Flamin' Hot. Flamin' Hot. Yeah, Jesus the Hot Christ. Cheetos movie. That has more value to the world for sure. Okay, so again, we'll talk about. Some and you know what? Brothers. This movie made this movie is the second most grossing movie of the year behind yeah. Barbie. So Mario made an insane amount of money. An it insane did. amount of money. Yeah, insane amount of money. And we and I am all about uh, money. <laughs> about money. Big box office. Uh, yes. Greed is good. The, the box uh, office achievement award here yeah. on the yes. <laughs> <laughs> the achievement in best cinematic and box office achievement. Yeah, while while everybody <laughs> while everybody was angry about Barbie, Siobhan was angry about uh, Super Mario Super Brothers Mario not Bros. winning the Golden Globes <laughs> award for best achievement in box office. It came in second place by default, I think. Yes, it made yeah. the second most amount. Of My understanding of how that award works. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, we're still in the news segment. The news uh, uh, here's here's news I want, Siobhan, your picks for best supporting actor that you did not oh. give last week. Now you now we're you have the floor. Now. We're doing it now in the news segment. Okay, we're gonna do. I, I'm gonna do this fast. Okay. Okay. So again, for people who who may have missed the intro just 20 minutes ago, Siobhan missed last episode where we talked about best supporting actor of 2023. She did not give her picks. Now she has the floor. Your pick, Siobhan, for Best Supporting Actor. Honorable mentions. Bradley Cooper in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Uh, he, he was a star of that movie. 
Holt M- McElhaney in yeah. the Iron Claw. Yeah. He is in, uh, insanely menacing into uh, ugh, 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 creepy in that movie, but also, but also has another side to him that it's, it's great. I also want to say Stanley Simons from the Iron Claw who played the, the run to the litter. Yes. Um, Oh, uh, uh, Mike, the, the mu the mu the musical Mike. One. Yes, yeah. Yes. Really good. Yeah. He, he, he stood out to me a lot. Um, Herschel Ali in leave the world behind a very, uh, complicated performance that I think, uh, evolves, uh, throughout the film multiple times. And then I'm going to say the ensemble of Forrest Goodluck, Marcus Scribner, Lucas Gage, Jake Weary from how to blow up a pipeline. Uh, cause that's, Ooh. that's an ensemble movie. I can't pick one person out there. Mm. None of them are better than the rest, but they're all great. Yeah. Um, and, uh, my final honorable mention, <laughs> I never bring honorable mentions this time. I brought 40 John Cena in vacation friends Two. You got to give it up for the boys. <laughs> uh, like this Hell is a yeah. crazy, fun, stupid, uh, <laughs> performance, uh, uh com- comedic performance in a crazy, stupid, fun movie. Okay. A comedic movie. Um, slapstick silliness. It's good. Uh, my number five for real. We're going to get into it for real. My number five, Dave Batista, knock at the cabin. Hell uh, yeah. Great performance. Frightening, frightening, yeah. uh, very, uh, very sincere, earnest, lots of layers to that performance. Uh, number four, Dar Salim. And you can't cut this one out, Marcelo. Dar Salim in Guy Ritchie's The Covenant. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I wow. he yeah. plays, uh, the translator. Did you see that, uh, Joey? No, I did. In fact, I don't think I knew Guy Ritchie put out a movie this year until like a week and a half ago. I think I saw someone bring up the Covenant. I went, "Oh shit!" There was a Guy Ritchie movie this year. He put out two, if you believe it. You uh, you certainly would have heard would not have heard it on the Talk from Society podcast, where I famously cut that segment out of a show from like three weeks ago, multiple times. Multiple I think times. it's happened twice where you've cut it out, <laughs> <laughs> only for time's sake. I I I, I looked at the runtime and I go. What can we lose here? Okay, yeah. Two mentions of Guy Ritchie in one episode. Get out of here. There you go. Uh, you may want to cut this one out. My number three, Jonathan Majors in Creed 3. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, wow. I'm sorry, uh, but like he gave the most... like, like I, I probably could have put him in number one. He gave like one of the most emotionally resonant performances of the year for me. Uh, his character arc is just beautiful and tragic i think um and the way that story wraps up i it it fucking sucks i get it i'm a bad person for doing this but Mm -hmm. look i gotta do what i gotta (laughs) do do. number two robert de niro in killers of the flower moon this is it's it's so menacing and scary you know and it it just slowly gets scarier and scarier and scarier and scarier as the movie goes on It, it the his performance unfolds itself um and unravels it changes even though I, I it doesn't even really feel like he's doing anything different um because i don't know robert de niro is just that fucking good where it's just like just the slightest changes in tone or whatever are going to evoke so much um and my favorite performance of the year uh my number one jason momoa and fast x uh, <laughs> okay whoa yeah. I, yeah, you know what? I'm uh, surprised that did not come up at all last episode when we went through. Uh, I talked to, to Matt about this. Uh-huh. Uh, he said he was going to put it on there, but he he thought I would have it on mine, so he didn't. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be honest. It's one I just completely forgot about. But now that you mention it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I would have mentioned him at all, but it's worth mentioning uh, now. My, uh, like, I he's just a, a very... Uh, very gay, uh, very, uh, hmm, androgynous, uh, gay villain, <laughs> bisexual villain that okay. is just like really over the top. And Jason Momoa is ha- clearly having the time of his life and he makes that movie watchable. Look, I think that movie is good out- outside of him, but I don't think it's that good outside of him. And Jason Momoa like is like legit raises it a full two stars for me. Like he is that magnetic of a performance in the film and such a fun, fun, campy, silly villain. I, uh, as a bit Sorry, Shiv, as yeah. a bit of an outsider to the fast franchise, what what type of villain with what type of car uh is is Momoa? How is he menacing <laughs> La Familia in this one? He's he's like laughs in your face, I don't give a shit, and okay. like he does seem like legitimately psychotic. Yeah. 
um, for as, the, as opposed to as opposed to just being kind of like a bad guy, like your typical sure. movie bad guy. And uh, he does drive, I believe, a green Mustang uh, okay. in a quarter mile race uh, where he does kill a guy by blowing up his car. Uh, one of Vin Diesel's old friends in Costa Rica, I think, or no, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, oh, no, Brazil, okay. it's Brazil. Okay. For lack of a better word, he's Joker esque. I think that's Joker totally on yeah. purpose. He's the Joker. Yeah, he's okay. the Joker. There is cool. a scene where he uh, is sitting around having a he's painting his nails and having a tea party with a bunch of his own dead henchmen whose eyes that he's taped open and yeah. having conversations with. I would describe that as Joker esque. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So that was the news. Next segment. What is it that we have been watching? This is where we just talk about some movies we've watched recently. Um, I've got two or three. Uh, I, I forgot to mention this to you, Joey, before we recorded. I mean, if you have two or three you want to talk about. We, oh, we absolutely. Those, yeah. Siobhan, yeah. Uh, have you watched any movies recently? Sure, yeah. I watched a movie called A Fish Called Wanda. <laughs> oh, that's um, right. I thought... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Thought that's great. I completely forgot about that. So hold on, Joey and me, and we're, we're let's hold off on our picks. I mean, on, on okay. our on our uh, 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 most recent watches. Siobhan, catching up on last week. Last week we talked a fish called Wanda. Me and Matt talked about it. But now I want to hear your thoughts, Siobhan. A fish called Wanda. I had a good time. I thought it was funny, yeah. especially Kevin Klein. Kevin Klein made the movie for me. Uh, very. Very, very over the top, silly, funny performance. I think I just descri- I described it as like everybody else is in like a kind of silly uh, heist movie, and he is in Airplane or uh, Top Secret. Like mm. uh, they they allow him to be super super silly, and like his character is just like such a dumbass. But who like the the secret to making that funny is that he thinks he's super smart, and like it's just a, a joy to watch, and his reactions and stuff are great. Um, uh, and yeah, but in, in general, I had a good time watching the movie. I thought it was funny, um, and fun, like, like totally pleasing. I, I, I'll say, I agree with you, Marcelo. I listened last week. Uh, my weak link of the movie is John Cleese. I, I, I didn't really buy him as like the lead of the movie or whatever. He's, he's just a little too, I don't even know how to describe it. He's just, he's just not hitting it. Uh, that performance is not great, and I'm not saying that just because John Cleese sucks. Like I, I, I put uh, fair, a bad fair. person on my top five superior <laughs> list. Cl- um, Chef, clearly, you have the guts to give flowers to whoever you want to give flowers to. <laughs> so, so, look, but look, I, I, I think I enjoyed it more than maybe a little bit more than you, Marcel. I'm between you and Matt on the on the scale. Yeah. I think if anybody listened to last week, yeah, and, and just a you know reminder or. If you if you didn't listen last week, folks, like I'm, yeah, I I I don't love a fish called Wanda. I was gonna come in knives out and just like bash the movie, but I slept on it. Like it has some good parts. I uh, ultimately I like most of the cast. My biggest problem being John Cleese. Um, but now it's 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 fine, and I I love Jamie Lee Curtis in it. She she uh, kind of steals the movie for me. Um, Joey, have you seen a fish called Wanda? I have not seen A Fish Called Wanda. In fact, I'll admit on here, uh, up until pretty recently, I'd conflated it in my mind with The Incredible Mr. Limpet, that movie where okay. Don Knotts becomes an animated fish. Okay. <laughs> Two completely unrelated movies. That's funny. Um, but uh, I like Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, I'm sure if I checked it out, I'd probably good. enjoy at least her parts of it. Yeah. Kevin Klein. Uh, uh, I totally recommend it f- mostly for her. And, and yeah, it's, some of it, it's still funny. I, I like Michael Palin in it, too. And, of course, mm-hmm. Klein. Klein is uh, an award winner, and we talked about him last yeah. week. And now we can stop talking about him right now. Yeah. Uh, because this was our animation episode, I wanted to try to cram in some animated stuff. Um, and the only thing I was able to fully fit in, I watched, I watched half of one of the Resident Evil CGI movies. And didn't get to finish it. <laughs> <laughs> the least likely thing for you to say in this moment. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. But I did, I did watch this morning, uh, Lupin the third, the first. Yes. Awesome. Uh, movie. which was just a goddamn delight. It's so, so fun. Uh, really fun heist kind of caper it's so um, with uh, lots of great goofy comedic stuff and a nice little story it's telling um, 
and just gorgeous animation, gorgeous 3D animation. Uh, Some of the best 2D to 3D design shifts. Oh ever. my god! So like, good. They, how they retain like I I, I like Lupin. I, I have watched a decent amount of it throughout my life, um, and how they retained those 2D like anime characters in a three dimensional CG style. Yes. I, it, it's, it's perfect. It's truly perfect. Flawless. So Stan, um, I'm, I'm looking at my Blu-ray copy over across from me now. And I'm like, is that, is that what I'm not doing that tomorrow? That's a, I'll jump right back in. <laughs> great movie. Yeah, and it's great too. It's a, it's a very breezy, like 90 something minutes. Um, really, Highly recommend it. Uh, just a uh, fun time. Very fun. Time. Uh, from the director of Godzilla Minus One, for all you oh, fans wow. of that incredible movie. Yeah. Same guy. Love it. The movie so, Godzilla yeah. Minus One. I haven't seen this movie. Yes. That is the end. Uh, it's on you Hulu, should. Marcella. Oh, it's on Hulu. Uh, and that is. The, yeah, check it Hulu. out. And that is the end of my, uh, my segment. Fantastic as always. Siobhan, you're doing great. Uh, Joey, why don't you go next? Sure. Um,. I, uh, in, in preparation for this podcast, have been watching and re-watching a lot of the animated movies of 2023. Um, but in addition to that, uh, as, as I said a little earlier in the pod, I saw American Fiction yesterday. Uh, really enjoyed that. Uh, in particular, d- in discovering that like most of that movie is a really compelling family dramedy. And then there's also the part of the movie that's been kind of marketed, which is the excellent, you know, satire about what it is to um, try to tell a black story in America and how that will be perceived by mainstream white audiences. Uh, And I mean, the marketing worked. It got me in the theater for the satire and then I stayed for the really excellent family dramedy stuff. So that was awesome. Um, Uh. I don't know if we invoke other podcasts on here, but I've been watching, uh, trying to watch the films of Barbara Streisand along with <laughs> Blank Check with Griffin and David. Uh, so I watched Yentl this week. Uh, How was that? A, <laughs> I've never seen Yentl. I've always yeah, wanted to see Yentl. That's about. Here's the thing. Yentl is a lovely movie. Uh, okay. I saw it a few years back uh, for a Jewish American fiction class I took in college. Uh, and in revisiting it, I think I got more out of it this time. Uh, you know, great performances from Babs and Mandy Patinkin uh, and Amy Irving. It, it's got this um, totally unique, as far as I know, uh, musical choice where all the songs in the movie are like internal soliloquies sung by Barbara Streisand, despite the fact there are other talented mu- musical people in the cast. Um and uh, I mean, it looks great. It's a strong directorial debut. Uh, some very hot people in that movie looking great in like golden early 80s lighting. Totally good. I, I think it's a movie that's very hard to sell because it's, you know, a, a gender construction site of a movie where Babs is pretending to be a young man trying to learn the Talmud. Uh, but it's also like a love triangle movie and it's also a musical. It's It's very much a... I think people should check it out, uh, but it's hard to kind of push up a lot of people's uh, list, I would say. It's kind of a hard sell, but good movie. Uh, and I saw Clerks for the first time. This oh, wow, week. for the Whoa. first time. Kevin Smith's Clerks. Wow. Yeah. We Whoa. have nothing to say about Kevin Smith, right, Siobhan? <laughs> we have everything to say about Kevin Smith. Oh, that's Smith. what we have everything to say, yeah. And we are always looking for more opinions. Joey, yeah, your thoughts on watching this for the first time? Uh, I enjoyed it. Um, I I think, it, I mean, it's the definition of uh, anybody with some good ideas and a movie camera can make a great movie for no money. Um, I think that uh, it, it didn't hit me in the way that I know it's hit some other kind of film nerd fan, friends of mine where they've been like, wow, you know, suddenly I have to go watch everything from the Ask universe uh but i did certainly like it um and as a 27 year old watching these 22 year olds make really terrible decisions uh i was like well i'm glad i'm slightly past that part of my life even if i am still figuring a lot of stuff out uh but mm. yeah a, a good movie i'm really glad i watched it 
Uh, well, thank you, Joey, for those uh, uh, films. Uh, uh, talking about them. Talking about movies is great, isn't it, folks? Isn't it great? <laughs> I love film. Yeah, I love it. Uh, I'm gonna <laughs> p- I'm gonna shout out three films I've watched in the last uh, week. Oh, please, Marcella, please. Go yeah, uh, what's it that you have been watching? Thank you. Uh, so. Uh, being the editor in chief of a website, uh, I get some privilege. Um, I know people who knows who know people. Um, I get access to certain things. I've gotten access to see some Sundance films. Sundance 2024 just ended, or is ending as of this recording, uh, Sunday, January 28th. I've seen a few Sundance films. Uh, I'd like to shout them out. Uh, okay, here's what I've seen. Or just three I've seen. Uh, I saw a movie called Thelma, uh, starring June Squibb, Richard Roundtree, Parker Posey, Malcolm McDowell. A uh, hell of a cast. Uh, Thelma, uh, I'll read you the premise of Thelma. When a 93-year-old Thelma Post is duped by a phone scammer, she embarks on a quest to take back what is hers. So, any beekeeper fans, this may sound familiar as a premise, <laughs> but what what makes Thelma so good uh, is June Squibb, who is, I believe, I'm gonna double check this. She is currently 93. ninety. She's ninety four years old. Dang girl. <laughs> yeah, and she made this film uh, uh, as a as a you know. Uh, uh, I guess 90, 91, 92 year old. And she's, she gives a fantastic performance. It's I, you know, the, the, the premise itself kind of silly. They, they, they do sort of um, pay homage to action movies. Uh, uh, at, at one point, Thelma, this character looks at, she's watching the movie mission possible fallout <laughs> and is inspired by Tom Cruise <laughs> as, okay. as she embarks on this quest to get her money back from these scammers. But it's a sweet movie, and it it features uh, Richard Roundtree in his final performance on screen, which is is great to great to see him there, and Parker Posey, wonderful as always. But yeah, I I I, I like this little movie. Um, it's called Thelma. I I don't know when this movie's coming out. Uh, s- some of these Sundance movies they premiere. We usually have to wait like a few months or maybe over a year for them to you know get distributed. But uh, down the line. Uh, if you have a chance to see Thelma, watch Thelma, starring June Squibb. Uh, next movie I want to talk about, Love Me, starring Kristen Stewart and Stephen Yun. Uh, here's the plot of Love Me. A post-apocalyptic romance in which a buoy and a satellite meet online and fall in love after the end of human civilization. <laughs> <laughs> Are they voicing the buoy and the satellite? Yeah. So, okay. The premise is... is it sounds, it sounds cool. The premise is quite insane, right? Um, I hate to, make, I hate to, make, I hate to make the comparison, but it's, it's a little Black Mirror-ish. Um, but it works. Ultimately, because of the chemistry uh, with Kristen Stewart and Stephen Yun. Um, yeah. Not to... Again, this is a movie where I don't, I don't know when it's coming out. But all I'm going to say is I recommend it. It's touching, and it may the the premise may seem silly, but it's because of Kristen Stewart and Stephen Yeun that this movie works. It it does some unexpected things. Uh, it does some things I'm like confused about, but in the end, again, especially Kristen Stewart, she one of our finest uh, She's always performers. Good. She's amazing. She's great, and I, I think it's because both actors really commit to this premise, especially Stewart. Uh, captivating. Again, chem- chemistry works. I recommend it whenever it comes out. Um, but yeah, on the face of it, you think this is insane. But trust me, St- uh, Kristen Stewart, Stephen Yeun together makes this movie work. Love me. Finally, a real pain. Uh, here's the premise of a real pain. Two cousins travel to Poland after their grandmother's death to see where they came from and end up joining a Holocaust tour. This one stars Jesse Eisenberg, Kieran Culkin, uh, directed by Jesse... Oh, that movie. Yeah, directed by Jesse Eisenberg, written by Jesse Eisenberg. Okay. Uh, This one did get picked up. It's being uh, released by Searchlight Pictures. Uh, I'm not sure when. I'm assuming at the end of this year. Uh, Yeah, I I, I love this movie. Uh, it's, It's funny. 
Uh, it's emotional because it's two people, two cousins traveling to Poland, you know, to yeah. visit a concentration camp. But there's more, not not to say that there's more to it than that. That's at the center of, I guess, the trauma of the movie. But it talks about just, you know, being connected to that, um, uh, uh, being Jewish and having family come from that, and just like 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 living as human beings in in in, in the current age. And Karen Culkin is amazing. Karen Culkin, speaking of Oscars, I can see him get get nominated next year for an Oscar for this because wow. it's it's phenomenal what he does. Um, he, he, he he sort of plays the more like um, off kilter cousin who speaks his mind and is like very like loud and funny at times, but also has you know tragedy behind his eyes. Which Karen Culkin, if you've seen Succession, like you know he can do and. Uh, it's great to see this kind of performance from him in a feature film. Uh, but yeah, uh, A Real Pain. That one I'm excited also for more people to see. So yeah, I'm happy I got to see those movies. Again, hopefully these movies will be out soon enough for more people to see. So those are my picks from Sundance. Uh, Marcel, I got a quick Sundance question. I don't know if you, you got to this movie, but I've seen a ton of buzz about I Saw the TV Glow. Thank you for bringing that up, because I know some, yeah. I know somebody here has some thoughts on it. Uh, but <clears throat> I I was excited to see it. It was not on the uh, on the list of movies for me to see, so I okay. I missed that one. I've also I'm also missing uh, 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 the new Steven Soderbergh movie Presence, uh, which I hear is fantastic, and I'm a huge Soderbergh fan. I think that's an understatement. But I mean, Siobhan, I think I think you know more, or you know, uh, you're excited about I saw the TV glow. Why is that, Siobhan? Uh, incredibly, uh, the the director Jane Sconebrun. Their uh, I don't know how to pronounce their last name, but their uh, last movie. Um, We're all going to the World's Fair. It's like my my favorite movie of the last like ten, uh, ten years or so. And uh, yeah, I just uh, really, 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 I really want to see it. Yeah. Like, I just, I just do. I, I believe in Jane as an artist, and like we 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 are living in a. Uh, a, a, a miniature renaissance of uh, trans filmmakers coming up. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jane, uh, Alice Mal McKay, Vera Drew, um, Violet Price, uh, a few others, Louise Weird, Mia Moore. Like, there's a lot of very exciting things happening um, in the trans film world, and the, but none of them are happening at the, at the scale Um that Jane Sconbrun has pulled off, like they're making an A24 movie, you know, like this is an A24 Hell movie. Yeah. So like, yeah. that's really exciting uh, for me uh, just personally. And because I fucking loved their last movie. All right. I think that's it. I think that's what we've been watching. So now we can move on to the next segment, which is it. the movie of the week. Oh boy. Movie of the week, 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 week. What a movie, movie of the week. Uh, the movie of the week this week is Spirited Away, the award-winning animated film by Hayao Miyazaki. Now, before I go back, like I always do, and look at the Oscars of that year, we'll go around and give our general thoughts, our first impressions, or you know, uh, uh, quick thoughts on the movie uh, first. Uh, Joey, why don't we go to you? Your just your quick thoughts on, and we'll get into it deeper. But your quick thoughts on Spirited Away. Sure, uh, I love this movie. Uh, uh, re-watching it last night I think this is my fourth or fifth time with it uh, I, I kind of came to Miyazaki's works sort of late considering how big an animation fan I am I, I really only started watching them kind of late high school, early college um, I think it's a masterpiece it's got stunning animation it's from beat one it's one of those movies where you are so immediately on board with the perspective of the main character and just want to follow her and watch her stand up to what makes her afraid and, and, you know, watch her grow and watch her overcome seemingly impossible odds. It's got so many great little guys. (laughs) I'm a big big fan of movies where there's just little dudes going around being weird. I love little head dudes. The the Miyazaki canon has a million of those. Um, The the little mouse in particular might be my favorite Studio Ghibli creation. Hmm. Uh, The the baby that turns into the little mouse. I love that little mouse. Um, 
the music is gorgeous. Uh, I I also this year got to see the the filmed stage play adaptation of it, and that is also amazing. The, the fact that the the movie is so good and so beloved that it could be even transferred into a different medium entirely and still be amazing. It's a great movie. I think everybody should see it. Great. I know somebody who just saw it for the first time. Siobhan. <laughs> Siobhan. <laughs> right? <clears throat> I, I saw it as a kid. Oh, did you? Okay. Okay. You know what? I take <clears throat> it back because I swear you've said on this show you, you weren't uh, uh, too up on your Studio Ghibli. So I forget which ones you've seen. I'm not, you've seen I'm not too up on it. I, yeah. I've seen this and Princess Mononoke. That's it. Okay. So um, I, take also, it back. Like, I saw this at eight years old on VHS. So. <laughs> I take it back then. Like, I know okay. somebody like, who's... I might as well have never seen it. Yeah, I I, I, I take um, it back. I'll, I'll, I'll say, I know somebody who hasn't seen it in 20 years. Siobhan Irving. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, no, it is, uh, it's a flooring movie. It really is. This is so, so, so beautiful. So gorgeous in its style, in its visual style, in its storytelling, in its spirit. You think you're, you think you kind of have been able to settle in with it, but it, it just continues to blow you away. Uh, what, there's always something new, some new visual flourish, some new addition to the cast of characters, to the wacky cast, a new little guy, um, <laughs> that will just blow you away all over again. And there, there's so many absolutely, uh, like uh, amazing shots, like the, like, uh, him, like, uh, when, Uchiro, right? Uh, Chihiro is the is the protagonist. Chihiro, Chihiro, Chihiro. and later called Sen when her name Sen, is stolen. Yeah. Yes, when Chihiro is uh, walking through a, a like a hedge maze. Kind oh of, my like, god, the flower hedges. shot! Yes, the flower shot. Yeah, it's <sighs> mind blowing. I mean, so good. <laughs> like I, I I don't know how the hell they did that, and it's something I could see how you do it with a camera, but animated and anime. I don't understand how they did it. And it's just, it, it really blows my mind. Um, and yeah, it's just such a uh, beautiful, rewarding movie to watch. Uh, and keeps you in it the entire time. And uh, Marcelo, I got one fun piece of trivia for you. Oh, I wasn't expecting this. Everything is connected. The voice of Chihiro or Sen is Deve Chase. Who plays? Oh yeah, I know. Donnie Darko's little sister, Samantha Darko, in wow. Donnie oh, wow. Darko, wow. and S. Darko. She's in S. Darko too. She's in S. Darko. Wow, it's all connected. And Michael Chiklis. <laughs> I, I will say this time around, I watched. I watched it in the original Japanese this time around. I've seen the dub several times. Ooh. I think the dub is excellent. Um, but this time around, I decided to watch in the original Japanese sub. Uh, how, how do you feel about that in general, Joey? Uh, the, the subs versus do, dubs. Yeah, do you have any opinion on that? I uh, I think that the animation, you know, dubbing industry is better right now than maybe it's ever been. Um, in particular, G Kids, who uh, has been releasing a lot of Japanese anime films locally in America and other places, um, has been doing incredible work. The dub for Boy and the Heron was fantastic. Yeah, um, they. Uh, have you know they're responsible for bringing over a lot of movies both in subtitled and in dub uh, the last couple of years that I've really loved The Night is Short Walk On Girl uh, and Inu O um, which are from uh, I always mess up his name uh, Masaki Masaki Yuasa who's another wonderful I maybe mispronounced his name but another incredible uh, Japanese animation filmmaker um and between the work done in Funimation here in my hometown, and you know, there are a lot of dubs that I love watching. There are also shows and movies I like watching in the original Japanese. Uh, and I think people should explore both. I think see hearing multiple talented voice actors play the same character, you get a lot of different nuance from each performance. And so, yeah, both subs and dubs are good. Sometimes one is better than the other with a production, but I like both. Yeah, yeah, there we go. That's that's the right take. Yeah, I I. Uh... I jumped at the chance to watch both the subbed and dubbed version of Boy and the Heron, which I'm yes. glad I'm glad I did, because uh, I uh, I love the English dub, um, but I really strong. 
I, I, I shouted out Robert Pattinson as a best supporting yes. actor. Our honorable mention last week. I think he does incredible stuff in that. He's so good. Yeah, he's so good playing. Out uh, and 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 maybe I'll talk about that movie later. But in particular, him uh, in that performance, it's 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 not only because it's Robert Pattinson doing that voice, but also just just how good that voice is and just how it fits yes. that character. Um, but I, I did see the original subtitled version and I love that version too. So um, yeah, there's, there's great things in both. Um, speaking of Studio Ghibli, this cat, which I'm holding in front of the camera, uh, which you. only Joey and Siobhan can see, nobody else can see. His name is Gigi. There we go. Gigi from Kiki's Delivery Service. Um, so a wonderful movie. Uh, we, I, I named him several years ago after I saw Kiki's Delivery Service for the first time. And we had a black cat and we go, what are we going to name this black cat? And I go, well, it's got to be Gigi. So I love Kiki's Delivery Service. I love uh, just so many Studio Ghibli movies. And Spirited Away is one I saw for the first time a few years ago and I was eager, eager to revisit. Now that I think I, 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 I'm, I have a better appreciation of animation overall and those movies. So, and especially after having seen The Boy and the Heron, I was eager to see this again. And yeah, I loved re- rewatching it. Um, it's it's incredible. I'm very, very happy to talk about Ghibli on on this show uh, because it's it's I I, I want to get fully back into rewatching these movies, like all of them. Um, nice. Yeah, so I've seen most of them. There's a few Miyazaki blind spots I have, and there's a few of the non Miyazaki Jib. Actually. Pretty much all of the Ghibli movies that aren't directed by Hayao Miyazaki, I don't think I've seen. And so I haven't seen Tale of Princess Kaguya. I haven't seen When Marnie Was There. Like some beloved oh, I've seen Kaguya. I've movies. Um, Kaguya is wonderful. So now let's go back to the Academy Awards uh, that were held March 23rd, 2003, honoring the films of 2002. Uh, first question is for Siobhan. What won Best Picture this year? It's Not a Beautiful Mind. It's not. Be- That's two thousand two. <laughs> it's not a beautiful mind. A hey, uh, one movie that you always bring up when I ask you this question. It's a beautiful yeah, mind. Okay, so not a beautiful mind. I, I, I know the lineage. I know it's uh, American Beauty, Gladiator, uh, Chicago, um, mm. A Beautiful Mind. What's two thousand three? <sighs> Fucking Return of the King. Incorrect. God, is that two thousand four? Did I skip a year? Um, Return of the King was 2003. Right. Yeah. So I did skip a year. Perfect. So I have the four years previous and the year after. Yeah. Okay. So as you try to come up with an answer, I'll read you the other nominees in this category. Okay. Best picture. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, minus the one that won. So in this category, The Pianist, hmm. The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, The Hours. Gangs of New York. And finally, the winner of Best Picture. Can you get it now, Siobhan? No, I don't know. I got to give up. Giving you a hint on video. Yeah. I'm... You're giving me a hint on video? Yeah. So, do, do you see what I'm doing with my hands? Was I wrong about Chicago? You didn't. Is that your answer? You, you were just listing movies. Now. I... No, I, I thought I was listing them in, in the order. I thought Chicago was 2002. Is that your answer? Chicago. Yeah, Chicago. Yeah. Son of a bitch. Of a bitch. <laughs> Trust your Damn instincts, Shiv. You yeah. had it. Yeah. <laughs> uh. So, yeah, Chicago won Best Picture. Let's go through some of these other winners. The, Best... the only good Rob Marshall movie, my understanding. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's mm. right. Yeah. Uh, he. Uh, I think mm. he maybe wrote one or two that were good, but I think director wise yeah that's his best movie only good movie uh best director uh roman polanski won yep awesome mm-hmm. best actor adrian brody for the pianist oh by the way polanski won for the pianist okay. best actress nicole kim in the hours best supporting actor chris cooper adaptation best supporting actress Catherine zeta jones chicago uh, original screenplay, talk to her, Pedro Almodovar. Uh, best adapted screenplay, The Pianist. And of course, a lot of other ones. And best animated feature film, Spirited Away. 
Uh, I'll read you the other nominees in the Best Animated Film. Yeah, they yeah. were Treasure Planet, mm-hmm. Spirit, <laughs> Stallion of the Cimarron. Yes. <laughs> Lilo and Stitch. A movie I love. Also starring mm-hmm. to be yeah. Chase. Ice Age. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. It is. I She's Chihiro and Lilo. Lilo. Oh, wow. Uh, That's crazy. Disney was doing all the dubs uh, for right. Ghibli at the time, and so she was probably right down the hall. They just brought her over, and she gave a great performance. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, so those were the four nominees in uh, fifth one. What was one. the final one? Uh, Ice Age. Ice Age. Yeah. Yes. So Ice Age, Lilo and Stitch, Spirit, and Treasure Planet. Spirited Away took it. Uh, yeah, let's talk more about Spirited Away. I, I mean... Choice. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I I also like Lilo and Stitch. By the way, I'm not saying anything bad about that one, but uh, the other three, I, well, I like I like Treasure Planet. I, I okay. think Lilo and Stitch is the better Disney animated release that year uh, of the two. But I like Treasure Planet. Wait, uh, Joey, uh, have you seen all these nominees? Like all of them? Uh, let's see. Um, Spirit Away, yes. Uh, Lilo and Stitch, yes. Many times. Ice Age as a kid, uh, I definitely saw it. Uh, Spirit, I think as the as a kid, but I remember more about the Baskin Robbins ice cream promotion <laughs> for Spirit than I do the movie itself. That's funny. Uh, and uh, I like Treasure Planet. I saw Treasure Planet as an adult, uh, okay. just within the last like two years, and I was like, ambitious movie, not perfect, but really fun, great designs, you know, cool movie. Uh, yeah. Also worth noting, uh, this was the second year the the, the uh, best animated feature film category. Was a thing. Uh, yes. First year was Shrek in two thousand one. That one that was the first one. Uh, then second year was this spurted away, and following year after this was uh, Finding Nemo. That was the best animated film winner. Beginning Pixar's many years of just dominating the best animated feature category. I mean, uh, uh, I don't want to tease the game later, but uh, save all your Pixar thoughts for that. Cool. Um, but more about Spirited Away. So yeah, okay, Joey, I like your point uh, earlier about those little dudes. The little dudes. Little dudes. Uh, uh, pretty much every uh, Miyazaki or Studio Ghibli, there's like these weird little dudes. It's why it's one reason why I love Boy and the Heron so much. Uh, agreed. There's at least three swarms of little dudes oh, in that. Oh God! And, off the top of my head, and it's it's. I don't know what it does to my soul. I, I'm just enlightened when I see these little dudes on screen. Uh, Boy in the Heron and this. Um, yes. which, which one's the best little dude, in your opinion? <laughs> in Spirited Away. Oh, in, Spir- in Spirited Away. Um, so for me, there's two categories of little dudes. There's little dudes that appear in swarms, which every time there's a swarm of guys where the character animators are having each one be interesting to watch in a like ocean of them. I'm blown away. I, I love that. Um, in Spirited Away, the best of the swarms are probably the little soot dudes. Yes. The, the, the soot gremlins mm-hmm. who are awesome. Um, I'm also a, quite a fan of the, the ducks with leaf hats who are guests at the bathhouse. <laughs> yeah. Um, who are more more background? They're less important to the plot, but every time they're on screen, uh, I think there's in particular one shot where there's like five of them shoved into a bath, and they're all just like joyfully squawking at nothing as they're getting a bath. I, I love that. Um, and then uh, individual little dude, I love the mouse yeah. that the baby turns into, and I love the little um, flappy bird that makes the. Bzzz. <laughs> sound effect that carries them around um a dynamic duo uh that the whole third act of the movie i'm just watching all their business whenever they're on screen um this time around i note i was taking note of like little details because you know when you've seen a movie like five times you can enjoy looking at little things you haven't noticed um and there's a part where chihiro does a a, a apologetic bow to zenibaba uh in her cottage and the little bird gets tangled in her hair and has to untangle itself, like mid apology. I was like, I love that. I've somehow never really noticed that before. Is it like that bird in uh, in Little Mermaid? At the end of Little Mermaid, that makes the priest look like it has a boner. <laughs> <laughs> I, I 
I'll say I'm more familiar with the VHS case uh, boner fumble for Little Mermaid. I'm not sure oh, I remember yes, that exact I'll say word. That <laughs> uh, oh, hold on. B- b- before I turn to Siobhan and uh, for for her thoughts, uh, more thoughts on Spirit of the Way. I always forget to do this. I always do this in case anybody is like, "What the fuck are you talking about, Spirit of the Way?" Um, the, the 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 synopsis of Spirit of the Way. During her family's move to the suburbs, a sullen 10-year-old girl wanders into a world ruled by gods, witches, and spirits. A world where humans are changed into beasts. That's a basic premise. So there's a lot going on. Yeah, I, I wish I knew more about that. Japanese mythology to know how much this is based on that. Or is this all out of whole cloth? I mean, I certainly recognized uh, figures that could be described as like Oni, which are like Japanese demons. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's a lot of these characters have very like yokai energy, the like Japanese spirits that, you know, are associated with different ideas and things. You know, the river guardian spirit that they clean up and and Haku and stuff. I don't know how much is uh, drawn from things that exist and how much is the Studio Ghibli team creatively interpreting Japanese mythology into their own original story. But it, it certainly captures um, a recognizable yet unique energy, I would say. Uh, Siobhan, uh, talk more about just you re- revisiting this after 20 years. Like, did, You said you had little to no memory of it? And I, I, but I don't know how much I'm conflating with like seeing screenshots over the years of characters and stuff. So, yeah, I, I honestly don't know how I, if I could answer that question. Uh, I could tell you my favorite little dude, though. Uh, okay, uh, Siobhan, who, uh, who or what is your favorite little dude in this? The three, the three little green heads. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love those guys. I, I, I love the, uh, the, 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 the mob of, of soot, those little black little, yes. little dots. Mm. Oh, it's just so, I, I, I don't know. Like, like you're saying, Joey, how they love, how they care for her and like yeah. drop the rocks on themselves mm-hmm. to help her out. It's so cute. They, oh, I, so I read that as they didn't want to do their work anymore. And so they start dropping the rocks so that she'll do their work for them. But I love both uh, interpretations. It, might, it could be that. It could be that. Yeah. I think initially when I saw this, I maybe was a put. Uh, I was maybe uh, put off by it just a bit because I think uh, uh, I had seen maybe one or two Ghibli's before, but I wasn't too familiar with like the 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 overall vibe of it. And then watching this for the first time, I'm like, "What's going on?" But now, I, like I said earlier, I appreciate it a lot more. It's like I love it when it makes these like like turns I would have never have thought of. Like her parents turned to pigs. Okay, whatever. You only explain everything to me right away. That's fine. I'm I'm going along. Well, they've they've acted piggishly. They, they've, they have. they've walked <laughs> they've walked up to this massive buffet of food, and when no one is there to offer or serve it to them, the dad just goes like, "We've got cash and credit cards. Let's just eat to our heart's content, <laughs> and then we'll pay for it afterwards." Like, <laughs> <laughs> and they got what they deserved. Is what you're saying, Joey? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that she gets her parents back, but when when Chihiro at the beginning is like. Mom, Dad, maybe we shouldn't go in that dark tunnel. And they're yeah. like, no, come on, it's fine. Like, her her anxiety is very relatable. <laughs> so I, I love the uh, the fairy tale aspect of the whole thing, which I think is yes. the thing about almost all of the Ghibli movies is that it's just a, you know, this kid, like, entering this new world and just being, just, just viewing it through their eyes, but also... Like she's smart. Like she, she's so smart. yeah. She, she I, I, I like her responses to like the, the, these uh, situations she's in. Um, like, so uh, I, I forget who who it was initially that tells her you go go uh, go get a job right with yeah Haku yes. uh, explains to her that if if she asks for work, she cannot be refused and thus she will be safe. Like yeah. her her labor has value in this magical world and she needs to go get herself out there right. And because of that, because of her initial, like, uh, uh, her pathway of like, okay, you need to do this. She runs into all of these interesting characters. She runs into the 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 the, the, uh, the soot mob and like the rocks. And I'm like, I'm on board right away. I'm like, give me more of this. Give me more of these outrageous things I would have never have thought about. Um, and then just yeah, give me an entire twenty minute section of this giant ooze creature coming in to take a bath which i yes. think is my favorite part of this movie because it's it gets it's again 
it's something I, I uh, that I'm like, wow, we're spending so much time doing this one thing, but that one thing kind of reminds me of like uh, Kiki's delivery service. Like it really shows you again how smart this character is, how you're on her side, and how just resourceful in the end she is. And yeah, yes, oh, so good. Uh, I I love when when they when they pull out all the garbage from the river spirit. Yeah. Um, Again, in, in in details, I like I decided to notice because I've seen this movie several times. Um, amongst all the detritus of like bikes and barrels and goop and just like urban pollution from wherever this river was, there's just a whole toilet. <laughs> yes, <Yeah. laughs> made me laugh. What's What's insane is this isn't even my favorite Ghibli. My neighbor yeah, okay. Totoro is even closer to my heart because that's a movie that reminds me deeply of my little sisters being like little oh. maniacs uh, oh. growing up. Uh, but I, I adore this. I do- adore this movie. I love Spirit of the I, 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 I was going to ask, like, where do you think <clears throat> one should go from here if they wanted to get more into Ghibli? The big three intro ones are My Neighbor Totoro, Spirited Away, and probably Kiki's Delivery Service. You could argue Ponyo, which I think is also wonderful. Um, and then once you've seen those, once you're kind of bought in, then it's Howl's Moving Castle, uh, Princess Mononoke, which is incredible, but I've only seen it once. I, I came to it kind of late. Um, but Mononoke is awesome, and the, the dub was like written by Neil Gaiman, like wrote the English script for the oh, dub, wow. and so that's a cool dub to watch. And then, you know, I well, well, hopefully we'll talk about it later, but The Boy and the Heron feels like a, like, you if you come to it having seen a lot of Miyazaki's previous work, you're going to get even more out of it than seeing it kind of out of context, even though it, I think it totally works on its own. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Like, like what I was saying before about, I love that feeling uh, in these movies of, like, entering, entering a new world and learning the... Um, sort of bureaucracy or like tiered system, like the, oh. the class system of like where these creatures lie and this newcomer just facing it. And like, you know, part of it is like reforming to it, but then breaking the system in the end, which yeah. I love. Uh, and and yeah. there's clear rules. Yeah. Like it's a, it's a bizarre, scary world to come into, but there's rules and everybody has to follow them. It's very, it reminds me of like, Fae, like fairy imagery in Western uh, mythology of like, if you go to the Fae wild, there's going to be rules. And as long as you follow them, you probably won't get eaten. You know, <laughs> uh, um, I, I, I want to say my, my mother, she like really is off put by the anime style and she's never oh. really wanted to watch any anime, anything um, ever. Okay. And uh, I started spirited away with her and she loved it so much we watched the whole thing and by the end she was like like really hoping that there was a sequel because she just wanted to watch more of it oh well then she should watch more of Hayao Miyazaki's movies yeah yeah Yeah. that's what I'm thinking like that's 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 kind of why I asked the question it's like maybe maybe Kiki's is next or I, hey, hey if, if if you ask me, it's it's Kiki that that you should watch next. That's that's my favorite. I, I recently oh, you're biased. I am biased because my cat's named Gigi. Yeah, uh, but I played by the great Phil Hartman. In that yes, dub. he's wonderful in that movie. I, I I fell in love with that movie uh, watching the dub version. Um, I think like on DVD, like years and years ago, and hadn't seen it in a very long time. And then they played it in a theater a few months ago. Uh, they just played the subtitle version. And it was my first time seeing the subtitle version, and I was still enthralled. Like that, you know, the the, the point you made, Joey, about subbed or dubbed. Like to me, that movie in particular it doesn't matter. I think both versions are fantastic, mm-hmm. and but you know, the English dub has Phil Hartman as uh, Gigi, and who was it? Uh, Kirsten Dunst, right? Plays Kiki. yes, yeah, K- Kiki herself, yeah, Kiki Dunst. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, Siobhan... The, I, I I say Kiki's Delivery Service um, is is pretty is wonderful movie. one to watch, especially you know uh, um, paired with this movie because I think both leads are just fantastic. They're like they're so again they're so bright and you, uh, they're resourceful, and you really are rooting for them uh, uh, throughout the entire movie. Oh, and I also want to say again that point you made, Siobhan, about uh, your mom 
not liking like is it is it the anime style or just like the animation style that she's not a fan of because i i relate yes. i'm i'm also in the same boat some anime i've tried to watch i it, it i can't describe it it's not pleasing to me like to the mm. eye it, it's again hard for me to decipher why that is maybe just terrible but I think there's a lot of different styles of Japanese animation, and some you're going to vibe with, and some you're not. Yeah. You know, it's a diverse enough space. But this, oh, it's purely my thing. I love the look of this. It looks oh, yeah. incredible. So God, it's um, it, the 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 detail of it. I think is what I love. It's it's so lovingly crafted that every inch of the frame, there's just there's just so much detail that I am just in awe of it. I guess. And you know, and, and and not to say all anime I've seen is is bad. I mean, uh, I love uh, Akira, that film. Hell yeah, a great lot. movie. Love it. And uh, of course, like it's it's it might sound basic, but I love Cowboy Bebop. I've seen that yeah. series. From be- be- Cowboy Bebop slaps. Beginning to end, I love it. I love Cowboy Bebop. The the movie was back in theaters recently, and uh, it the, just the timing didn't work out. I couldn't go. I was free that night, but I had no idea it was playing, so I missed it. I have not seen the movie yet. That would have been a perfect way for me to see it for the first time. Uh, the movie yeah. Cowboy Bebop. Oh well, maybe next time. Oh. Uh, all right, why don't we wrap up Spirited Away, Siobhan, yeah. Any last it, thoughts on Spirited Away? And we'll go to you, Joe, in here. No, then. no, you have no final thoughts on Spirited Away. Good movie. Good movie. Oh yeah. Um, I have this little uh, booklet that came with my box set. Oh, look at that. Here. Yeah, we see um, that on video, yeah. And uh, I just was really moved by, like, I, I read this whole little section on Spirited Away, but the final line uh, I really liked, and I'll, I'll be happy to read oh, it here. Oh, please. It's a good denouement. Um, this is from uh, Miyazaki's, like, pitch for the movie, essentially, uh, which ends with, I would like to make this a film in which the audience of 10 year old girls can find the wish of their true self. Oh, so good. (laughs) And I think that's beautiful. Uh, And this movie is, is for everyone, but the fact that this movie exists and there is a protagonist who both feels fear of the unknown, but also staunch bravery in the face of impossible circumstances. In in particular, the scene where she has to walk across like a broken pipe as it swings away to successfully like go make sure her friend gets healed, like all that stuff. It just melts my heart as an incredible movie. I think everybody should see it. Ah, Yes. Uh, I'm in complete Uh, agreement. Uh, uh, Go ahead, Shannon. Can I I ask one uh... Just quickly, um, how does the how does the movie translate to the stage show? Because that might oh, be yeah. a good thing to watch next. It's so cool. Uh, yeah. It's just wall to wall practical effects and puppets. Wow! Uh, mm. And amazing costumes. Uh, and the woman playing Yubaba and Zenibaba in particular is really incredible. As is uh, two different. Uh, there's two casts and these are both on HBO Max this is a very accessible filmed production of this stage it's on play. HBO oh I had it's, no idea it's on Max you should check it out yeah oh wow um, I, I don't remember off the top of my head which of the two casts I saw um, but I'm sure they're both excellent because uh, you know with young actors they usually ca- double cast like young roles like Chihiro so that you know the kids can not be on stage every night and can also go to school and stuff um but if you love cool puppets and practical effects and want to see a really faithful adaptation of this movie to the stage, uh, check it out. It's awesome. I was really glad it, it, G Kids released it in the theater last year, and I got to like see it at my local Angelica with some friends. It's awesome. Really good. Very cool. Great. Very cool. And that was our movie of the week, uh, Spirited Away. Check it out on HBO Max or just Max. Uh, and also check out the stage show on Max. Next segment. Here we go. Our favorite animated films of 2023. These are our personal picks. Do not come at us. Again, I have to say this every week. Uh, if you want to, you know, uh, if, if if you want to tell us your favorites of the year, I mean, there must be some way to do it, right, Siobhan? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I mean, in a just a just a second, we'll be reading off some uh, favorites from people in our discord uh which you can access become a member of talkfilmsociety.com slash discord 
come talk to us about film or wrestling or video games or TV or whatever you want to talk about. Yeah. Except uh, heavy politics. Don't. Do <laughs> yeah, we don't do politics on uh, that channel. Uh, I mean, yeah, in that in that Discord. Uh, so when we start with our picks before we go to the Discord. Yeah, and why don't I just start? Go ahead. Or I should end. Oh, either one of the two. Siobhan, take it away. Go for it. Okay. Um, okay, so my number one, uh, the Super Mario Brothers movie. <laughs> so, okay. I took my cousin to this. He's uh, 10 years old. Um, uh, took him to the local theater to watch it. And uh, he had an absolute blast watching it. And I had an absolute blast watching it right next to him. Um, uh, it, 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 it really does bring to life. Like, uh, look, I'm, I'm a fucking Mario nerd since I was, I think it's probably the first video game I ever played. I have video, I have video of me playing Mario before I even have memory. Um, and, uh, like I, it's so baked into my brain and like, I was very nervous about this adaptation and I'm pleased to report that like I, I had a great time. It's a night. It's, it's nice and fluffy fun. A uh, really, really, really good time. Uh, and some cute animation stuff. And I really liked the, the voice performances, uh, including Chris Pratt. Like I, I think everybody does a fine job. Uh, I mentioned it earlier. I just, I do really enjoy this movie. I have a great, had a great time watching it and, uh, whoever's next, you can go. Wait, so is that it? Is that your list just ends at one? You betcha. <laughs> okay. Did you see any, did you see any other 2023 animated movies this year? <laughs> uh, I saw one. Yeah. W- um, which I know what you're talking about, Siobhan. And yeah. you know what? Let me pick up the slack and I'll, I'll mention that movie when I mention it. How about that? Uh, okay. Because I, I also oh, I, oh, I I I watched half of TMNT. I have not been able to get back okay. to it. So that's <laughs> okay. that's my failing. Yeah. So the the, the one movie Siobhan is talking about, uh, where it, it could have been a list of two. Now it's just a list of one. I also kind of had that in mind. I'm like, well, this one particular movie, I've pretty much bashed all season. I've, I've been saying it's kind of like uh, lost favor in my mind. I've cooled on it a lot, but I have it on my list because it's still worth talking about for a few reasons. We'll get to that in a bit. Um, I've, I've also, I also feel like I haven't seen a lot of animated films this year. So it's not that I struggled to come up with five. It's just like, these are the five I'm talking about. And I couldn't, I couldn't do a top six or seven if you, if, if, um, because really I think it's just these five for me. So number five, and this one might be controversial because this is probably not even a film. I I don't think it is a film, but I'm I'm gonna talk about it. It's Scott Pilgrim takes off. It's a series. Hell yeah! Right? Great show. Mm. Not a film, but awesome. Not a film, but awesome. <laughs> but you know, it's uh, I believe it was directed. All episodes were directed by one director, right? And all written by the same people. So in in That's a true. in a sort of Twin Peaks season three sort of way, it's a film in quotes. But I, I wanted to shout it out because I was hesitant coming into it. Scott Pilgrim is my favorite movie of all time. I've said that many times. Wow. Okay. A- and when it, when it was, you know, uh, uh, when the details came out that it was like this sort of anime retelling of, of the movie, I go, who needs this? Sure. Like the entire cast is coming back, but there's no way this will be interesting to me. Like I said earlier, like I... My my brain does not function well when it watches some anime, but I th- I think the series works. It's it, it it's it's clever in how it handles the adaptation. Um, I say that in big quotes adaptation because it, it does take like a drastic like left turn at the end of the first episode. Yes, and, it, and I think by the end it's like really smart in how it tells this story. Um, and yeah, the voice cast incredible because it's all it's all the voice it, it all the actors who were in scott program basically came back to to revoice these these characters which is fantastic so yeah i loved scott program takes off uh that was my number five no number four this one might be surprising <laughs> and i <laughs> i laugh in saying this but yeah it's trolls band together <laughs> Okay. I was hoping okay. we'd get to talk about trolls uh, a little okay. bit, at least. Just a little bit. 
Yeah, so let me. I, I didn't even pull up the page because this was just like a last minute addition for me. But I saw Trolls Band together, I believe, like Thanksgiving break. Uh, my, yeah, it was Thanksgiving. Uh, we had some downtime that weekend. And I go, you know what? I'll take, uh, I, I told my sister, I'll take the kids to go see a movie and kind of give you a break. So. I took through. I took uh, my my niece and two nephews to go see Trolls Band together, uh, and I <laughs> this did not turn out like I uh, have expected it to, because I've, I've been through this before. Where I go, yeah, let's go see the new the new uh, Minions movie, and I just felt terrible by the end of it. No, Trolls Band together is actually a fun time. It's actually, you know, funny. Uh, the animation is. Like surprisingly good. I I I I guess it's the Spider-Man uh, no. uh, Spider-Verse effect where oh sure yes it, that's fair in terms of like other uh, uh, you know production companies other animators saying let's try to not make this how it's how it has been for the last like fifteen years like the CGI animation let's add more let's add clever things in this animation because it's yeah it's 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 become dull you know in my opinion. Just this, this uh, DreamWorks or whatever CGI animation, and it, it, there's like stop motion. I think in Trolls Band together, there's like different types of animation. Uh, it it works. I I like it. So that's my number four. Trolls Band together. Surprising to me that it's on the list, but it's on the list. Um, my my number three. This is the movie Siobhan did not want to mention, but I know she's seen. It is Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. It's my number three. Okay. Yes, I've been bashing this movie for the last few episodes, but I have to come to my senses. It is a good movie when it comes to a lot of it. It, The animation is spectacular. The, the, The craft of it is... It works. But for me, like the story, I think, is lacking. I, I have my problems with the story, especially at the end. But... It's kind of, I'm not doing it begrudgingly because I I have to say Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is a great animated movie. It's just it's not one that I totally love though. That's number three. My number two, right above Across the Spider-Verse, is Mutant Mayhem. T M N T Mutant Mayhem. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's fun. God, speed of animation styles. Like yes, this is another example of just. A studio saying, let's just change it up. Let's make it more interesting. And they do. Uh, it's funny. The voice cast is great. Those needle drops are fantastic. The montages. Um, it all works. And again, another one where I was hesitant in you know, in, in watching it. Because I'm like, it's another Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. I've seen so many in the last few years. Like, what, what else can they do to make this series interesting again? And they figured it out. I think it's a very enjoyable movie. It's 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 definitely it, it was a surprise. So yeah, it's my number two. My number one, of course, the boy and the heron. There's nothing beating it. It's it's in my top uh, uh, I think fifteen of the year for sure. Uh, I love it. Like I was saying before with Studio Ghibli, um, like if you're familiar with any of their other works, it's it it's it's essential, I guess, in understanding, I guess, Miyazaki. And him as, as an artist. And uh, either way you see it, subtitled or dubbed, it's fantastic. And the voice cast in the English dub there, it's it's it just, it, it's incredible. Especially Robert Pattinson. So overall, yeah. The Boy and the Heron, the best animated film I've seen in 2023. So that's my top five. I do, do I want to talk about Spider-Verse now? I, 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 I Listen, I'm, to... I'm happy to talk about Spider-Verse Plenty. I feel like I did. I kind of had a feeling I was going to be coming on here as the Spider Verse defender, which is fine. We yeah. I, we need that person sometimes to kind of yeah. counterbalance us. I just let me say my piece. I don't want to yuck anybody's yum. Like it, it, it's cool that you like it, and like I understand that, and I do <clears throat> see a lot in it. I just was like too focused in comparing it to the last movie. Part of this is on my fault. Uh, are on on me um i was less interested in the characters this time around every single one of them including miles and gwen um Whoa. okay uh i and and all the new characters like i i didn't think they were as 
interesting or fun is the last group of, you know, Spider Noir and Spider Pig and blah, 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 even though I do respect that they didn't just bring them back. For me, the biggest bummer was the animation style. Uh, like, it, it, I know it's in the same series. I understand. But for me, when I saw across, or when I saw uh, Into the Spider Verse, it was like I was seeing something that I had never seen before, something that I didn't even know was possible. It, 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 it like it, it made me think about the medium of animation in a brand new way. This felt like more of the same, and like when that same is as good as it is. That can be a good thing, but, like, I was just so, so, so blown away by the first that, like, I was expecting some jump in, in even any way. But if there was, I never, I didn't, I couldn't pick up on it. Um, and so that's part of my disappointment with it. And, and like, I, it's not like I hate this movie. It's just I was disappointed by it. I hate to do this, but, like, structurally the movie was annoying to watch uh hard to watch boring i wanted i kind of wanted to walk out of the theater wow. i was um i was severely bored uh getting two hours into it or whatever and it's like a it's such a long movie and i and it's 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 way too much movie to not be a complete movie <laughs> like i i it has it doesn't have an ending in my eyes uh certainly not a satisfying one anyway i yeah i i it felt too much like part 1 um and then i compare that to the other part ones of this year <clears throat> that i have seen like fast x that's that's a part 1 um like, impossible. and if i could I didn't see Mission Impossible. Oh, that's right. But there's at least one more I can think of, if I could think of it, that uh, they gave me satisfying full stories. And I don't think I got a full story out of Across the Spider-Verse, and I certainly was not uh, um, uh, satisfied by it. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of malaise. It's a lot of... <sighs> reckoning with feelings and depression and teenage angst and stuff. And I, I get that, but it's too long for how much of that there is. And then when the action picks up, it's not satisfying. It's not, I didn't think any of the action sequences were, were good. I, I, I was watching the, the one where there's like 500 Spider-Man chasing uh, Miles or whoever through the, that through one spider society. Building. Yeah. And I was like, I was like really looking around. I was like trying to study all the Spider-Man and it felt like I wasn't getting as much cool detail as, uh, I had in the first film and my blood wasn't pumping like an action scene should, a chase scene should make my blood pump. Like it, it just, I, I was just let down by it at so many turns, you know, I, I was, I was very disappointed. Um, and I'll still see the third one, uh, but I'm hesitant on if I need to go to the theater for this one. Um, cause I was there day one for this. Cause I was like, just hyped for it. And maybe my hype got the better of me, which, All right. yeah. Which leads us to Joey's picks. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I will say for the record, I, uh, I have watched, I have seen 10, uh, animated movies released in 2023 um, there are a few I did not get to, uh, which include Trolls Band Together. Uh, I, I tell you not, folks, I almost, as a, as a bit, watched all three Trolls movies back to back just to talk about them for five minutes on this podcast. Oh. I did not have time to do that. Um, but uh, as a fan of musicals and of uh, creative uses of music and animation, I am excited to get to the Trolls franchise. I feel like I will like them. I did not see Leo, which I heard was surprisingly good. The Adam Sandler iguana movie. Oh yeah, I, forgot <laughs> like, about that. I have out. no idea what this is. Uh, I, I've heard it's it's a very good musical comedy, um, wow. which I means I'll probably like it, but I have not seen it. Uh, and I didn't get to. Uh, I have to shout this out on the mic because a friend of mine from high school worked on it. 
Uh, there is a Netflix animated movie called The Magician's Elephant, that Animal Logic, the same studio oh, yeah. that worked on Leo and uh, back in the day worked on, I believe, the Lego movie pictures with Warner Brothers. Animal Logic was involved. Um, cool. But a friend of mine uh, from high school worked on The Magician's Elephant. So I wow. uh, want to give it a plug awesome. here. Okay, let me get to actual movies I saw. <laughs> um, honorable mentions are uh, Elemental which this was the first time in ages I did not see a Pixar movie in the theater. Uh, I actually checked this one out just like this past week. Um, and uh, I was really surprised because I really did like it. Uh, I think it was marketed terribly. <laughs> I think the best part of that movie is the romance between the two leads. And the world is cool, but is also full of little inconsistencies and by selling the world and the the new tech of Pixar making, you know, people out of environmental elements, um, I think that's a harder sell than the, like, deeply personal to the filmmaker immigrant story and the really good romance at the heart of that thing. Um, but uh, not not my favorite Pixar, but, but good. I think worth watching. Uh, Suzume, uh, a beautiful movie. Um that I saw back when it came out uh, did not super stick in my mind despite having a wonderful score uh, and I did not have uh, time to rewatch it. Uh, I would still recommend checking it out. I think Makoto Shinkai is a great uh, animation director, um, but I would recommend his other two most recent movies, Your Name and Weathering With You, uh, a little more. I think he's, he's made some great movies lately. Um, okay, actually, here's my five. Uh, oh yeah, and Robot Dreams has not been released wide, and so I haven't seen it. And yeah. I desperately want to see Robot Dreams. Yeah, it looks too. great. Uh, Neon supposedly put it out in the next couple months. I'm excited about. It. Okay, here's my five. Number five, a movie both of you have probably never heard of and have never seen. Uh, the Inventor. Have not uh, heard of it. Uh, it is a Leonardo da Vinci uh, kind of biopic musical about the last few years of his life when he was sort of the right-hand scientist to the king of France um, animated with stop-motion animation sort of in the style of like a Rankin Bass um, but with a little more budget uh, and hand-drawn animation for the sort of fantasy sequences uh, it totally blew me away and surprised me I checked it out because it got an Annie nomination for best uh, independent feature along with Robot Dreams and a few like Hungarian movies that are nowhere near wide release yet. Um, Matt Berry plays Pope Leo X as <laughs> one of the villains. Uh, it's a really wonderful piece of craft. And also I really connected with, um, in the movie, Leonardo da Vinci is like searching for the soul by like uh, dis, you know, dismembering the human body, which was very controversial at the time. And that idea of searching for anima in the medium of animation, I found really compelling. Uh, and I think it's a really cool movie that I wish had gotten uh, a wide release. The only reason I watched it uh, was because it was available on the streaming service that comes with my library card, <laughs> Hoopla. Oh. Uh, and uh, I really liked it. I wanted to shout out uh, that movie. Um, number four, TMNT Mutant Mayhem, which absolutely kicks ass. Uh, like Marcella was saying, uh, incredible sequences, great needle drops, that old boy, like cut between all four turtles as they beat up oh, yeah. the five different heads of the local crime syndicate. One of the best scenes of the year. Yeah. Absolutely awesome. Uh, number three, Nimona, a movie I've heard you say multiple times this podcast, you have no relationship <laughs> to, but that I've been following for almost five years in its development. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so finally we can have an answer to this. What is Nimona? <laughs> okay. Uh, Nimona is a sort of sci-fi fantasy um, queer adventure story based on the graphic novel by N.D. Stevenson, who is one of my favorite working uh, figures in animation and comics today. Uh, he is a trans mask... Um, artist who only came out somewhat recently but uh was previously uh 
known as uh, as a queer artist, but has sort of evolved his identity in the public sphere in recent years. Um, Nimona is a shapeshifter. Uh, she can turn into different animals and dragons and things. And the movie is about uh, her learning about this knight who's been outcast from sort of this high-tech fantasy kingdom. Um, he's been accused of a murder he didn't commit. And she rolls up and is like, I'm going to be your sidekick. I've got cool powers. I love your vibe. Like, let's F shit up. You know, let's cause some chaos. And he's like, I'm actually a good guy. Everybody thinks I'm a bad guy. Uh, are you still kind of down? And the movie is about their friendship. It's about uh, her identity uh, and her, like, feeling like an outcast in this kingdom. Uh, it's about how media convinces children to hate certain people before they've even known them. Like, it's about the power of media to influence, like, being willing to learn and trust and, and discover new types of people. It's, I think it's beautiful. It's got, it was going to be the last um, movie made by Blue Sky Animation, who are known for, for Ice Age uh, and uh, the, that Peanuts movie that's really great. Um, and then it was a little too gay for Disney <laughs> when Disney bought it uh, during the 20th Century Fox acquisition. Uh, and it was saved by Annapurna Pictures and Netflix. Uh, and the fact that it exists is a minor miracle. And I think it's a really wonderful movie. And I see it's um, on Netflix now. It is. Yeah. Yes, it is on. It was uh, unfortunately, uh, it did not get a theatrical release. I wish it had gotten one, but it is available for anyone who wants to see it on Netflix. It, it rules. Um, there you go. And then uh, I've literally spent the last three weeks trying to decide which of these is actually my number one of the year. Um, it is a, it's a fierce battle of, uh, of wits in my brain between The Boy and the Heron, one of the most beautiful movies I've ever seen on the big screen, uh, and a culmination of a great director's career, as this might be his final film, and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, <laughs> a sequel to one of my favorite movies <laughs> that I've seen three times since it's come out, twice in the theater. Um, I own the art book... Look at that. A, a thousand artists, several of which I'm uh, big fans of and follow on Twitter, worked on. But also a movie where apparently a certain producer uh, was a real butt during mm. and made it extremely yeah. difficult for those a thousand artists. Yeah. 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 You know what? Uh, yeah. Hey, it's actually woke of me to not like the movie. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to be quite frank and nuanced and, and honest here and say that uh, in terms of the Oscar race, I hope The Boy and the Heron wins Best Animated Feature. In terms of which movie was my favorite animated movie of the year, it is Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. There we go. Okay. A movie I, I think is less good than its predecessor, but that is amazing and I love it. Yeah. Great. Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't want to take anything away from you, Joey. Like, I, I'm, yeah. I'm glad that you love it. I'm really, I really, really am. I just like that opening 20 minutes of Spider-Gwen and is one of the best openings I've seen in ages. I I agree that what I really fit what I really hit on in this third time around is that you're right. This movie kind of ends like three times. Yeah. Mm. And then it also kind of doesn't end. Yeah. Uh, yeah. which a very fair critique. You could also argue it pulls an empire of it leaves you very excited for the next one with a with kind of a dark cliffhanger. Um, sure. But it, it is a little less like fist pump, perfect movie satisfying than its predecessor, which is, you know, changed everything. Into the Spider-Verse had a, a, way, a ripple yeah. that has led yeah. to some amazing movies in the last few years that I love. Yeah, I, I, I mean, the uh, um, majority of my list... I reference, you know, Spider-Man uh, into the Spider-Verse because I think the influence is there. Um, but yeah, I, I, I put it on my list across the Spider-Verse because I, I agree that craft is there. I do love that Spider-Gwen sequence at the beginning. I love her, like, watercolor world. Yes. Um, so there are moments in the movie I do really love. It's But, the, but again, I don't want to keep bashing it. Maybe. I love the score. I think it's yes. one of the best scores of the year. Yeah, Daniel yeah, Pemberton yeah, just yeah. destroyed it. It's so good. Yeah, totally. Yeah. 
But yeah, well, uh, folks listening, don't let me and Siobhan influence you. You have your own opinions. If you love Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, keep loving it, okay? Maybe we're wrong. <laughs> I also, I, I want, I want, I also I want to throw the caveat yeah. out there that I think once part two releases and yeah. watching these two back to back, I think that could change things a lot. I think so. Yeah. It, sometimes that happens. I, I, I'm i eager to revi- revisit Across the Spider-Verse and once the third one comes out. What, what's the third one called? Beyond the Spider-Verse. Beyond the Spider-Verse. The right. Yes. Um, Originally, Across the Spider-Verse Part 2. Right. And then they yeah. did a sort of rebrand, um, which I think was probably smart. But it did lead to someone in my theater on opening night straight up shouting at the screen when the 2B continued. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I, I got I got some of those in my screening, too. Yeah. Uh, but I, I'm eager to see the third one and uh, hopefully have my opinion of the second one change upon re- revisit. So we'll see. Yeah. Uh, Hobie Brown, one of the characters of the year. I love I love Hobie. In terms oh, of yeah. the, the new characters brought in for this sequel, as opposed to me continuing to love them from the first one. Love Daniel Kaluuya's performances, Hobie Brown. I was going to say that is one of uh, one of my favorite parts of the movie, and it's one of those performances where I'm like, that voice sounds familiar. Who is that? And it's if mm-hmm. you would have told me it was like just a a um, like a veteran like voice actor, would have mm-hmm. been like, yeah. But uh, Kaluuya is like just just fits it fits into that character so well, and I was a little surprised yes. to see, oh, it's Kaluuya. He's amazing. Um, that uh, that is a highlight. He's- Apparently, he's from the town where Punk was born in England, which is cool. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. That's the, one of those serendipity things. Yeah. So there you go. So that, uh, thank you, Joey, oh, yeah. for that top five of the year. Uh, put us in our place. <laughs> uh, Sorry. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a sucker. I'm a sucker for uh, massive works of metafiction that uh, give an opportunity for artists to shine on all technical levels in the art of animation. I love this movie. I'm glad you're here because again, That's we why you're here, Joey. Yeah. <laughs> in terms of this realm in particular, I am I, I you've seen 10, you said, you know, 2023 animated films. I barely I barely made a top 5. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So. I saw two. Oh, and I, I I didn't even mention, I mean, it's a TV movie, but The Venture Brothers, which is one of my favorite uh, TV shows of all yeah. time. I thought that'd be on your thing. I thought that'd be yeah. there. The, the Venture Brothers, Radiant is the Blood of the Baboon Heart, which absolutely rules, uh, not no question, but it is it is a great culmination to a great TV show as opposed to just kind of a great movie on its own, even though I do really like it, as evidenced by my uh, attire for today. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. So uh, hope you enjoyed, listeners, our favorites of the year, animated films. Uh, now... You know what? You know what, Siobhan? I, I think that's all, right? Uh, we have no n- nothing else to talk about in terms of the, the uh, you know picks of the twenty twenty three, you know, animated films. We, we can move on, right? Right? Um, actually, Marcello, what? Uh, no. On. God, we have to see it. what the people think. The people that aren't the people that aren't us. Hey. We uh, so, so we've got this Discord, talkfilmsociety.com slash Discord. Join, become a member, talk to this us. First I heard of it. About film in the society. And uh, we asked, uh, we have an awards channel uh, set up for the season uh, to celebrate the films of the season. And uh, we uh, ask uh, everybody every week um, that's in that channel if they uh, want to give us their picks for the category of the week. So I asked everybody their best animated movies. And our first response was Joey saying, you'll get mine on the podcast. <laughs> and our, sure second response, <laughs> our second response was Jay McMillan, who said, boy in the heron. I believe he means the boy in the heron. Uh, yeah. Nimona, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, Suzume, and TMNT Mutant Mayhem. Uh, I believe he means Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. <laughs> Yeah, I believe so. I, all of these were mentioned, were they not? Nimona was mentioned. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes. Okay. Um, I know these ones weren't mentioned. Cool, G- cool Jima comes in with. Uh, I watched. <laughs> he was asking if sh- if he could if he could say shorts, and I just said yes. And he uh, said he watched one of the Oscar nominated shorts, uh, Pachyderm, and it was quite nice on YouTube. Only ten minutes. 
I oh, tried to God. watch it before this record. It's been taken off YouTube from a copyright claim. Oh. I, mm. I was so mad. <laughs> Maybe Shit. it'll be back up later. Um, uh, Kojima continues. Uh, he also says he wants... Uh, I, he has. I only have Spider Verse. I believe he means uh, Spider Man Across the Spider Verse to push, and Mario. I believe he means the Super Mario Brothers movie to anti push. <laughs> so that's one Whoa. negative vote for Mario. Actually, no. That we're we're at zero for Mario right now. Oh, and I my vote p- minus is. I forgot. I didn't even talk about Mario on, on my list because I did not enjoy that movie. So I did not think it deserved to be on my list. Awesome. Thanks. I like it. I I think I I, I but it, it there were things about it that I wanted more of. Like when the score worked in Koji Kondo music, I got so excited, I, and then it would cut to take on there me, and I'm more. like, I like this song. Too. Give me the score. Give me like, I there, yeah. I, I'm I'm with you. I don't think it's a perfect movie. I, I I would I would give it like maybe a B or a B yeah, minus. It is a very faithful adaptation from game sure. to movie, and was sure. very fun to watch. For sure. Much like from yeah. Gamer to Racer, from game to movie. <laughs> from gamer from game to Jesus from Christ. game gaming to, to screen. Maybe the uh, most the trailer I saw the most times in the theater in twenty twenty three, that that Gran Turismo trailer. Oh what a bad trailer too. It was really like really bad trailer. Uh, it wasn't even the movie, it was like people talking about the movie. Ugh, ugh. <laughs> Um, and then uh, he also says, "Oh, and I guess I also support Nimona, even though I didn't personally care for it." Oh, right. So, uh, okay, thanks. W- uh, hey, people in the Discord, support something. I was going to say, people in the Discord, you don't need to give us your worst of the year. Give us the best of the year. Positivity. Yeah. I, 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 so, I still love you, though. Everybody in the Discord. Kojima, you're great. The Real Matt C. He's only seen two animated movies this year. TMNT Mutant Mayhem. I believe he means Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. And Mario. I believe he means the Super Mario Brothers movie. Um, Sam shot first. Spider-Verse, I believe he means. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. <laughs> Nimona. TMNT, I believe he means Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. Suzume and Elemental. Um, I still haven't seen Heron, but you can all but assume it's on my list when I do. I will not assume that. <laughs> uh, so. Come back to us later. Uh, Mike Schindler, he says, Across the Spider-Verse. Um, of course, he means Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. And he dropped his it's in front of... <laughs> in front of... That's, that's been, like he's been giving us the last few weeks. It's been the running bit where Mike just, just, just drops it's, you know, insert... You know, it's blank. Movie. Yeah. Um, Noah Thompson. I think that might be our last one. I think it is. Uh, he says, um, Scott Pilgrim takes off. Marcelo, you're not the only weirdo. Yeah. Um, the oh, Super Mario you. Bros. movie. Thank you, Noah. Thank you. All right. So Mario now has one vote. <laughs> um, oh, wait. No, 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 no. Didn't. Uh, no. Oh, wait. Matt, Matt voted for it, too. It's got two votes. Um. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem, uh, Robot Dreams, Suzume, Across the Spider-Verse. Yeah, I believe he means Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Almost was perfect there, Noah. And he fucked up again. He says, Boy in the Heron. I believe he means The Boy in the Heron. If I can't count Scott Pilgrim. Um, now, what's interesting about that last comment is he had already listed one, two, three, four, five, six movies uh typically we only do five uh but if scott pilgrim didn't count he would have five but (laughs) instead he's saying he wants to replace his sixth if it didn't count with another one so he would end up with six either way (laughs) i I just think that's really interesting what what he could have done was just add the boy and the heron to the list since he already went to six right i think so yeah Yeah. i I, like you already did six why not do seven yeah (laughs) But Noah, if if you actually have seen Robot Dreams, I am jealous of you. I was going to say, I want to know how you how you've seen it. I think he's the only one in the Discord. Chicago, and, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Probably they they it. played it at Chicago Fest, and and he's he lives yeah. near there, and he went there. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Um, I and of course I have another Discord that I asked Joey. Have you heard of the of the of the podcast Hollywood Handbook? Yes, uh, it's it's um, I I am I'm somewhat familiar with it. Great. 
Well, I go to the Hollywood Handbook Discord and I go to their films and TV section and I also ask them the same question. Cool. And I tend to just get a couple responses. Um, and mm. here we go. Somebody says they still want to see Mario and Spider-Man to see what the fuss is about. Um, oh. Where were you turtles. over the summer when they play it for like 20 weeks? Yeah. <laughs> um, they do say the first slam dunk... Oh, um, which, which I, I've heard I that's watch. amazing. I've heard that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I might have a link to watch that. Um, oh, cool. All right. Uh, the boy and the heron. Actually, they they just said boy and the heron. And I believe they meant the boy and the heron. Excuse me. Uh, Blue Giant or Suzume. Uh, what's Blue Giant? Yeah, Blue Giant. Huh? I don't know what that is. That's the first one I haven't heard of. Wow. <laughs> Blue we Giant. stumped Joey. That's it. I'm, Ring I'm the bell. looking it up. Uh, it's about jazz. It's based on a manga. Uh, it was oh. a G Kids release this year. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, it's a, a dude rocking on a big saxophone in this key art. This looks cool. Wow. Yeah. Um, and then we also have Edgar Allan Iverson. Oh, by the way, the 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 person who said that uh, uh, gave us slam dunk and hair, and uh, that was uh, 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 Richard Gear Solid. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's great, Richard Gere. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the now we have Edgar Allan Iverson. <laughs> Get under my cardboard box. Oh, wait, it's Richard Gere and Tootsie Fuck. What's Richard Gere? That's his big movie. Richard Gere is in American Gigolo. Chicago. <laughs> you say arbitrage, Siobhan? Yes. <laughs> yeah. When I think Richard Gere, I think arbitrage. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I actually do. But Chicago, the Best Picture winner of two thousand three. Oh yeah. Sure. Uh, okay. Uh, Edgar Allen Iverson, George. Um, I was on his podcast, uh, Last Little, uh, Best Little Horror House in Philly, ending soon. Uh, he says, Gotta be Boy in the Heron. I believe he means the Boy in the Heron. Other noms, uh, Turtles. I believe he means Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, Mutant Mayhem. And Spider Verse. I believe he means Spider Man across the Spider Verse. Anti nomination for Mario. I believe he's in Super <laughs> Mario Brothers movie. Man, you so, know, so mean I to our boy Mario. I think this is unprecedented. I know. I was gonna say this has never happened before, where we get negative votes nope. for movies. And it's happened twice. Listen, so now Mario I, is down on down to one vote. Shiv, I'm gonna I'm gonna join in your energy a little bit and say the French wing of Illumination is doing some pretty incredible CG work right now, and especially in that <laughs> Mario movie. And I hope they get to. Keep making cool projects that make a lot of money. Good for them. Thank you. Thank you, George. Thank you. Um, Lexi uh, Zaninetti, uh, my girl, she says boy and heron. I believe she means the boy and the heron. <laughs> um, and then George comes back. Oh. Other two noms. Uh, he says Namora. Is that a movie or did he mean Namona? He probably means Namona. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Scooby-Doo and Crypto 2. Okay, that is a direct-to-DVD Scooby-Doo movie co-starring Crypto the Superdog. I'm aware of yeah. that movie. <laughs> I, 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 you know what? I bet it's fun. And yeah, then, I bet uh, it's lots of fun. We have somebody named a Brandon Ship who comes <laughs> in and says, uh, uh, does Pokemon Concierge count? It was very cute. So, so stop-motion TV show on Netflix uh, from the Pokemon Oh, company. that! Yeah. It looks I really cute. I have not uh, checked it yeah. out yet. And, uh, okay, yeah, so thank you, Hollywood Handbook. Thank you, talkfilmsociety.com slash Discord. Uh, that is what the people had to say this week. Uh, two people really hated Mario. Three <laughs> of us liked it. That equals one person that likes Mario. Yeah, that's the big takeaway from that segment. Can I bring up one point of order? Go ahead. Now that literally everyone that you have reached out to has, point, has, has had a thing in. It is absolutely wild that the Walt Disney Company put out a film for their 100th anniversary and no one liked it and no one's talking Nobody about it. Nobody mentioned it. Nobody yeah. mentioned which. Right. Not a single person. I, I, haven't, <laughs> I haven't seen it because it was critically panned yeah. and it's not on streaming yet. And so I haven't checked it out. I feel, you know, I'm sure they all worked very yeah. hard on that movie, but it's clearly not a, a grand slam knock out the park. Yeah. And, yeah. And a f- friend of the site, Sam shot first, he said, uh, like he watched it today. He said that in another discord and he gave it like three stars or something like, uh, uh, yeah, just, just not, doesn't seem like they hit it with that one. Yeah. Oof. 
Well, uh, uh, sorry to those filmmakers, but Disney, the company oh. at large, can suck it. Um, yeah. Marcelo, you uh, you also didn't like Mario. Do you want to give it an anti-vote, bring it down to zero? You know what? I don't want to be that harsh, okay? It wasn't no. truly terrible for me to say it deserves a negative vote, so I'll just keep it at zero. It's at zero for me. It's at one. It's at one. Okay, so it's one. Uh, so you could bring it to zero. Uh, Mm, no, I don't want to. Uh, you're all. I, I don't know if you're all about balance like Thanos. <laughs> you know me. <laughs> what would Thanos do? Hey. <laughs> and I know we're going long, but the one other big release that I saw this year was Ruby Gilman Teenage Kraken from DreamWorks. Oh, yeah. Which is very cute. It has some lovely character animation, uh, but, you know, I watched it on a plane. Like, it was a perfect little plane movie. <laughs> I thought it was good. Nice. And those were our favorite animated films of 2023. That's segment done. And now, the next segment, it's the Gold Derby game. Or not. It's just the the, the game. There's no name for this. Because the Gold Derby de- the game. The Gold Derby game is dead. Okay. That was the game where I quizzed Siobhan on the rankings of the uh, of the of the of the hopeful nominees for the Oscars. Since since, since we know all the nominees now, that game's no fun. Uh, although we can we can play like a we just look at Gold Derby because I I think I have the link up. Uh, we haven't really talked about the nominees this year. We can just go through them. Uh, Good idea. Uh, Gold hold, Derby. Hold on. Marcelo. Uh, wait wait. Say, yeah. say that again. We're going to Gold Derby to check the best anime. Yeah, Gold Derby. Are you sure you don't mean uh, 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 Gold Furby, like in Uncut Gems? <laughs> no, Siobhan, I don't mean Gold Furby. I mean Gold okay. Derby. <laughs> My mistake. <laughs> Have your ears checked, buddy. You're, 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 <laughs> GoldDerby.com. It's a site where uh, uh, you know cool. prognosticators, analysts, yahoos, whoever can just sign up for an account. Um, they 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 uh, get to predict the winners uh, of the Oscars and other awards. But let's see what they say about best animated film. The category. Uh, I'll run through the nominees. Well, you know what? Let's let's play a quick session of of Gold Derby game. Uh. uh how about Siobhan? Since, <laughs> uh, um, since it's 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 mostly you, I want to torture with this. Um, can uh, can you guess uh, the ranking of the best animated feature film, of uh, films here on GoldDerby.com? Sure. Yeah. What's number one? Um, number one, Boy and the Heron. You are wrong. The Boy and the Heron. Spider Verse. Yeah, Spider Spider Verse is number one. So Boy cool. and the Heron number two. Yeah, Boy and the Heron number two. Uh, what were the three other films? Two. I remember one of them. Uh, Su- Suzume. Uh, Suzume Robot is not Dreams. nominated. Robot Dreams is nominated. Where's Robot Dreams? Robot Dreams is five. Yes, you're right. Robot Dreams is five. You got two more. What were the other two movies? The other two movies uh, were Nimona and Elemental and Nimona. Yes, Elemental and Nimona. Elemental at number. Three, Nimona at four. You got it. Look at that. You win. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, Gold Derby has Across the Spider-Verse, number one, then Born the Heron, Elemental, Nimona, Robot Dreams. Uh, Joey, what do you think about this category in particular, yeah. these five films? I think this is a great uh, set of picks. Uh, I What I was excited to see was whether the Oscars would follow suit with the Annie Awards and not include a Disney or Pixar release yeah. in their five this year. Because that was a huge upset uh, in the animation community that a lot of people were talking about. Yeah. Um, First time in a long time that's happened, right? That the uh, Yes. Yeah. Uh, a, very, a very long time, if not since the Annie Awards have existed. Right. Um, as far as I know. Um, but, uh, you know, Pixar is, is very popular at the Oscars as it has in general deeply deserved. Um, and, uh, and so seeing elemental there is not surprising. Um, Nimona is a very exciting underdog. 
Robot Dreams is very exciting as a, a hand-drawn feature that I desperately want to go see. Um, I was surprised there to hear that uh, the Boy and the Heron is not the Boy and the Heron, excuse me, shit, uh, is not <laughs> the number one ranked uh, for Oscar guessers. Yeah, uh, it's it's interesting uh, uh, to to read Gold Derby sometimes because what you think the front runner is sometimes they don't agree on. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know anything about gambling or odds, but they have Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse at uh, uh, odds are 82-25. I don't know what the fuck that means. Uh, and then Boy in the Heron is 71-20. I don't know what that means either. Pretty close. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, it's according to them, it's Across the Spider-Verse. But, you know, we have weeks until yeah. the winner's announced, so anything can happen between now uh, and then. I I will say, in terms of what I understand about Oscar buzz, um, the team behind Across the Spider-Verse have been extremely vocal uh, about the process and about promoting the movie between the massive cast and then, you know, the movie's three directors and their uh, very talkative producers. Mm. Um, And so there's a lot of uh, campaigning happening. And The Boy and the Heron famously had no marketing in Japan yeah. on purpose. Um, and G kids has put out some really fantastic interviews and stuff about the dub, but Miyazaki san himself is not really doing interviews about this film. And so I do wonder the effect of, you know, the campaigning, uh, two wonderful films, in my opinion, being sort of somewhat neck and neck, um, if uh, if Spider Verse will kind of get the bump, mostly because a lot of people are talking about it. Um, yeah, I would love to see one more hand drawn movie win an Academy Award. I would be thrilled if The Boy and the Heron won, but I would also be thrilled if Spider Man Across the Spider Verse won because I also love that movie. So yeah. we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. And you did mention Pixar has a long history of being nominated uh, for Oscars. That is the topic of our game today. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Th- I have a game for the both of you. Uh, we're going to oh, go wow. through the history of Pixar and the Oscars. Oh wow! Twenty six Pixar movies. Uh, not Jeez. not counting Elemental. We are going to go through each and every one of them. All of them. And we're going to get. Oh, you're going to guess the both of you. Cool. How this many? Me and Joey. How many nom- How many nominations each film received? Okay. Oh, so, interesting. So the game here is, I'll tell you this up front. Uh, the most nominations a Pixar film has received is six. And I can tell you which one that is. Okay. Okay. They receive other nominations outside of... Yeah. They do. Yeah. We'll talk about it. They do. Uh, the lowest oh, is zero. Sure. <laughs> so between <laughs> zero and six is your range. So I'm going to give you a film... A Pixar film. You're going to try and guess how many nominations it received. Uh, we're going to go back and forth. Uh, Joey goes first. If Joey cannot guess the number, goes back to Siobhan until one of you gets the point. Cool. Bonus points go to whoever can guess the win in a category that is not best animated feature film, because that's easy. So if you can tell cool. me what a film one in another category, you get an extra point if you know that. Uh, but we're only going to guess the number of nominations first. Again, if if you uh, if you can recall what you know what the uh, film won in you know in addition to or just another award at one, you'll get an extra point. So here we go. You understand both of you the rules of this game? Yeah. Yes, yeah, sounds fun. Okay. Again, the range is between zero and six nominations. Here we go. Joey goes first. Toy Story from 1995. Guess how many nominations it received? Well, it's before the Best Animated Feature category. Um, but uh, weirdly, I feel like there's a chance it was nominated for either Best Original Song or Best Original Screenplay. I'm going to go safe and say one for You've Got a Friend in Me for Best Original Song. Incorrect. Okay. Siobhan, take a guess. Three. Three is correct. So Siobhan, I got Siobhan it. gets a point. It was three. Best original screenplay, best original score, best song. Ah. And now this wasn't nominated for this one 
but it did win an award for special achievement. So that's that's an asterisk. So it did that makes sense because yeah. it was the the first completely CGI animated film. Yes, uh, yes, it does. It's, it says here uh, first feature length computer animated film, special achievement Oscar. So there they go. But the answer was three. Mm-hmm. All right, next film. This one goes to Siobhan. A Bug's Life. Uh, zero. Incorrect, Joey. <sighs> um, one. Correct. It was nominated for was it one. another Randy Newman best original song best original score? There you go. There you go. Little bug, <laughs> you're a bug, dirty bug. <laughs> I believe this one is Joey's Toy Story Two. Okay, uh, still before best animated feature category. Um, I'm gonna say one uh, for again for best original song. Correct, best original song. Yep. Nominated, did not win. All right, mm-hmm. this one is Siobhan's. Monsters Inc. 2001. Two. Incorrect, Joey. Oh. Um, that would have also been my guess, so I'm going to say one, just best animated feature. Incorrect, Siobhan. Three. Incorrect, Joey. Holy crap. Four? Correct. It was nominated for four <laughs> Academy wow. Awards. Oh my god. Best sound editing. Right, Monsters Inc. Best sound editing, best original score, best animated feature. Best original song. It won for best original song. Yeah, that song's great. I heard, I heard, uh, I heard that song in a sandwich shop the other day, and I was like, "All right, it's about <laughs> Monsters Inc. song." Uh, all right, now I believe this is Joey's Finding Nemo, two thousand three. Uh, I'm confident it won best animated feature. Um, I'm gonna say three. Incorrect, Siobhan. Four. Correct. It was nominated for four Academy Awards. It won Best Animated Feature. It was nominated for Original Screenplay, Original Score, and Best Sound Editing. Wow. Look at that. Pixar did pretty well well in these technical categories in the early days. Yeah. Uh, Now it's Siobhan. The Incredibles, 2004. How many nominations? Uh, One. Incorrect, Joey. God damn it. Four. Correct. Four. (laughs) <laughs> this it won best animated feature yeah uh did it get nominated for score for michael giacchino uh the incredibles no uh, i'll tell you what it, it should have that score whips it's one of my favorite film scores no i mean uh uh, uh you know you, you you still have the floor can you can you guess what it won for other than if it did win another one sure um did it get a did it get a best visual effects nomination no. Uh, okay. So it was nominated for Best Sound Mixing, Best Original mm-hmm. Screenplay, and it won Best Sound Editing. Oh, wow. Yeah. Including, it's got good sound. Yeah. That Omnidroid sounds awesome. Yeah. I, I see I see what they did there. Okay. Uh, all right. So for this one, we'll go to Joey. Cars, okay. 2006. Two? Correct. Two. Let me. Is it best original song and uh, and best animated feature? Yeah, best original song and best animated feature. Did not win any. Cool. All right. Yeah, yeah. that's probably the right call there. <laughs> uh, Ratatouille, Siobhan. Take a wild guess. Ratatouille, two thousand seven. That's that's a little tough. You did say one of them got six. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that this is one of those. But I'm also there's another one coming later that I think is the one that got six. You know what? I'm just, I'm just, fuck it. Six. Incorrect. Joey? I can think of at least, I know it, I know it won that, uh, two. Incorrect. Siobhan? <laughs> five. Five is correct. It was not Damn, I should have gone, I freaking love Ratatouille. I should have gone like a. So of course it won. <laughs> Good job, Sue. It won Best Animated Film. Well deserved. It was also nominated for Original Screenplay, Original Score. Sound editing and sound mixing. Yeah, all yeah. all good picks. Yeah, yeah. I love Ratatouille. I love Ratatouille. Wally, that is Joey. Wally, okay. take a guess. How many nominations? Five. Incorrect, Siobhan. Six. You are correct. Six. Wow. Let's fucking go. That one got best picture. Uh, 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 let's no, run it through. didn't. It was snubbed for uh, best picture. Really? <sighs> it won for best animated yeah. film. Nominated for the following categories. Screenplay, original. 
original score, original song, sound mixing, sound editing. It did not get best picture. We'll do it now. Up. That's Siobhan. Siobhan, guess how many nominations were up? Two. Incorrect. Joey? Say four. Incorrect. Siobhan? Three. Incorrect. Joey? Six. Incorrect. Siobhan? Five. Correct. Five. Wow. Yeah. Best picture, best animated film, uh, best original score. So, yeah, nominated for sound editing, original screenplay, best picture. It won for best animated feature. And also, Mm -hmm. best original score. It won that one. Michael Giacchino's score won the Oscar. One of my favorite film composers. Love that guy. Toy Story 3. (laughs) This one is Joey. Okay. Again, three three categories at least I know. I'm going to say five. Correct. Five. Boom. Nominations. Oh, again, I want to remind both of you, uh, if, if it's your turn and you have the floor, you can also guess if it won any other awards. Uh, you want to guess which of... Uh, I, I think it also won... I think it won Best Animated Feature and Best Original Song. You're correct. It won Best Original yeah. Song. So you get a bonus point for that. Nice. Uh, so, yeah. You get all five of those categories. So all five of the categories are Sound Editing, Adapted Screenplay, uh, Best Picture... It won a Best Original Song and Best Animated Feature. That was Toy Story 3. So so that's tw- is that 2010 or 2011 Oscars? Uh, 2010. Uh, the, the, yeah. the film slate of 2010. Yes. Yeah. That, that was a very exciting year for young Joey, seeing <laughs> Toy Story 3 nominated for Best Picture. I was like, let's go! I'm rooting for you. <laughs> I love that movie. All right. Siobhan is next. The 2011 film Cars 2. Guess the nominations. Zero. You are correct. Zero <laughs> nominations. Yes. A correct decision. I walked out of the theater on that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it says here, Cars 2 was the first Pixar film not to be nominated for any Academy Awards. I remember car- the release of Cars 2 was uh, Joey realizing that sometimes you can't have a perfect track record forever. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 was me, that was me realizing... Oh, maybe I don't like animated movies that much. What? That Cars yes. 2 killed your Car- love of Cars animation? 2 ruined animation for me. I'm not even joking. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, my God. Uh, Brave. Joey. One. Correct. One. Damn. For Best Animated Feature. Yes. It was nominated for that, and it won that. Just one nomination. Yes. I, re- I remember that year me thinking something else should have won. I don't remember what the nominees that year were, but Bray was not my favorite of that bunch. Monsters University. Siobhan. Three. Incorrect. Joey. Zero. Correct. Wow. Zero. Yeah. Nominations wow. for Monsters U. Okay. I like Monsters U. I think it's an underrated Pixar, but I, I get it. Inside Out. Joey. Three. Incorrect. Siobhan. This is one of my favorites. That does not come into play here. We're not playing tables. <laughs> I also like Inside Out. Inside Out's great. Two. Correct. There you go. All right. Best original so screenplay. That's why I said it. Best animated feature film, which it won. So. The Good Dinosaur. Siobhan. I cannot decide if it got the nomination for animated or not. I think it did. So one. Incorrect. Joey? Big ol' goose egg. Correct. Zero. Zero. Damn. Poor Peter Son got that. He's like the third director on that movie, and he had to kind of take the consequences on it. Not not a great not a great. The movie. third Pixar movie not to have been nominated for any Academy Awards after Cars 2 and Monsters University. That's 2015. Now 2016. Finding Dory. This is Joey. One. Incorrect. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah, sorry. Incorrect. Siobhan. Three? Incorrect. Joey? Back to Joey. Then, it, wow. then it's Goose Egg. Goose Egg yeah. is right. Finding I'm, Dory Finding didn't Dory. get an animated feature? It is the fourth film from Pixar not to have been nominated for any Academy Awards. Wow. I, I kind of liked that movie. That's kind of surprising. The water in that movie is gorgeous. That's, it is, oh, yeah. I love... 
they, they made a Finding Nemo sequel for that reason alone. Uh, but yeah, it's cute. It's not my favorite, but it's good. All right, Siobhan's next. Cars 3. Zero. Correct. <laughs> Cars 3. The fifth Pixar movie, not to have any nominations at the Oscars. Yeah. Uh, now, Coco from 2017. This is you, Joey. Uh, two. Correct. I believe it won yes. both Best Animated Feature and Best Original Song. You got it. A bonus point. Yep. Mm-hmm. Incredibles 2. Siobhan. Zero. Incorrect. Joey. Fuck. One. Correct. Yeah. It got a Best Animated Feature nom. I don't believe it won. It did not win. Yes. Brad Bird's only Pixar loss at the Oscars, if I recall. Wow. Wow. Incredibles and Ratatouille both took home the trophy. Joey, back to you. Toy Story 4 from 2019. Uh, Two? Correct. Yes. A best original song and best animated feature? Yes. Song and feature. Oscars loves Randy Newman. If he writes a song, they'll they'll put him on the board. Now, Onward. This is you, Siobhan. What is it called? Onward from 2020. The one with... Tom Holland and Chris Pratt as fantasy remember? brothers. Do you remember oh, Onward? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Released right before the pandemic. Mostly watched. I do Disney vaguely Plus. remember it. Yeah. Um, I remember this one having like a weird situation about how it got released too because of the pandemic. Yes. yes. Uh, one. Correct. It got one nomination mm-hmm. for best. Animated feature. I got that one. Because yeah. Not a lot of animated features released in the year. <laughs> the year 2020. 2020. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of that, 2020. Soul. This one's you, Joey. Uh, two. Incorrect. Siobhan? Um, damn, I feel like it should have gotten like a score and a song. So three? Correct. Nice. Score and song. Again, you have the floor here, Siobhan, if you want to guess if it won anything uh, other than animated feature. Well, you're not going to tell me to do this if it didn't, so it won song. Incorrect. It won best... It won score, actually. Best original score. Yeah. Wow. It's a great score. Yeah. So, animated feature it won, best score it won, and nominated for best sound. Back to you, Siobhan. Luca, from 2021. Luca, another one I barely remember. One. Correct. Yeah. Best animated feature. That was its Took one. Took me forever to get to Luca. Lovely movie. Good movie. Now back to you, Joey, Turning Red. Did that incredible boy band song get a song nomination? Mm. I think it got snubbed. One. Correct. Yeah. Just that. Good movie. Yeah. That's that's my favorite of the recent crop of songs written by Billie Eilish and her writing partner for major motion pictures. Yeah. I really like I really like the uh, Four Town songs they wrote for that movie. <laughs> yeah, it just uh, nominated for best animated feature, Turning Red. Yeah, love Turning Red. Great movie. Finally, yeah. Lightyear, Siobhan. Zero. Correct. Yes. The sixth Pixar movie to not have any nominations. I can't believe that was actually Pixar. Like, that feels like something that should have been farmed out. Lightyear has a good opening. The rest of it, I wasn't crazy about. I'll say that. I think the time dilation stuff at the beginning is pretty cool. Yeah, some of it is interesting. I, 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 did, I do remember enjoying it by the end. I'm like, this is fine. It's not anywhere near like the best of Pixar, but it's fine. Yeah, it's based on the real man that Buzz Lightyear is based off. <laughs> so, here are the results of this very long game. Uh, Siobhan, you have a score of 13. But that does not beat Joey's score of 15. Joey, you win. Nice. Hey. It was the bonus points that did you. Yeah, bonus points. That's one. Good game, Shiv. Good game, good game. Good game, G- good game, good game. GG's, GG's, Joey. <laughs> okay. That was fun. I used to, I, one, one of my nerdy party tricks from time to time is just trying to list all the Pixar movies in order of release. So this was very fun and oh, for that yeah, part of yeah. my brain that stores that information. So that was the Gold Derby game, or should I just say the game? 
So that the was let, let's just Sorry, call it Michael Douglas. <laughs> that was the game. <laughs> Sorry, Michael Douglas. I think I think we should just call it the Gold Derby game, even though there's no Gold Derby in it. So that was the yeah. Gold Derby game. Uh, now for the last segment, who's going to win the Oscar for this week's topic? Animated film. We kind of danced around it, but we got to make our final picks here. Really doesn't mean anything. Oh, by the way, we're prognosticators, me and Siobhan. Bet in your Oscar pools, you win a lot of money. We know what we're talking about. Yeah. Just, just, just don't, you know, we're never wrong or we always get it right. Mm. Bet on us. So, Joey, why don't, you go, why don't you go first? This is it. Right now, weeks before we, we, we know the result, who do you think is going to win the Oscar for Best Animated Feature Film? Considering this uh, question has been on my mind almost nonstop for several weeks, um, I am going to state here that I think The Boy and the Heron is going to win Best Animated Feature at the Academy wow. Awards this year. There we go. Wow. wow. Uh, Siobhan, what about you? Take a mortgage out on your house. <laughs> um, get as many loans as you can scrabble up. Yeah. Commit loan fraud. Yeah. Take out the life insurance policy you have on everybody you know. And uh, bet it all on Elemental. <laughs> okay. Bold. Whoa. Bold choice. I'm writing it down. Elemental. Okay. A, f- a few years ago, Siobhan, I would have agreed with you on the Oscars just kind of auto-picking the Pixar release. But I think yeah. things have gone a little more, no, a little more I, nuanced I, I the last couple of years. I agree with you. And I think I, I just think that things are going to split in a certain way to where Elemental happens to get in there somehow. There's, by the and way, I think, and, and shut up. <laughs> and I think that, uh, and I think that, um, uh, God damn it, you made me lose my train. Of <laughs> <laughs> There's no way Elemental's going to win. There's no way. <laughs> I really don't think um, Elemental will win. But, a movie but, I like, he, I don't, I don't think it'll win. Here's the thing: the bet, the bet is big because the 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 payout. You got to think of the payout, how big that's going to be. So you think the vote will split between Boy and Heron and Spider Man Across the Spider Verse, and then the third pick will will, will jump. <laughs> Mental just slides in there, <laughs> and, and and then those Vegas odds. What what, what the fuck is that going to be? That's going to be like thirty five to one or something, and you are going to, oh my god, you you are going to live in a mansion after this. I, I I have the odds here. Uh, elemental uh, odds of nine to two. So I don't know what that means. Maybe it's big. Okay. Well, you're gonna have a lot more money than you did before. <laughs> I'm gonna say Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. It's gonna win the Oscar over the Boy and the Heron. I'm not gonna like it, me personally, but I have a feeling that's where it's gonna go. I, I will applaud wildly whether The Boy and the Heron or Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse wins Best Animated Feature. I think they are two totemic films that I will watch many times over the rest of my life. That's fair. Um, speaking of fair, Joey, thanks for giving us your time. This is the end of the show. This is where we say thank you. Uh, You're very welcome. I had a wonderful time. Yeah, I, I, I hope so, because it's been three hours worth of your day. Of your day. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm this sorry, Joey. Would, this would be pared down um, yeah. in the editing. But, Joey, before we go, plug 246, clean 246. Where, oh, we'll see. Joey, where can the people listening find you online? Yes, uh, you can follow me on the website formerly known as Twitter, uh, at rmfezman, uh, R-M-F-E-Z-M-A-N. Uh, if you'd like to follow my newly made Letterboxd account, uh, you can follow me at Joey Hamill to see what movies I'm, I'm watching and uh, what movies from last year I'm backlogging onto that site from my personal list. Um, those, are, those are the primary places you can find me online. Please check out Dream a Little Deeper. Uh, I oh, yeah. hope uh, Tara and Alex start that podcast up again soon because uh, you'll hear more of me because I, I recorded more stuff that isn't in that show yet. Um, and uh, I also think somewhat famously came up with the name of that podcast. Oh yeah. Uh, which, yeah. Which I'm quite proud of. Um, and uh, in terms of plugs, uh, go support your local 
theater in your community, live theater. Uh, I work in that industry. I, I will be vague about where because I swore a little bit on this podcast and I like to be professional. Um, but as someone who works in uh, in the live theater industry, uh, it's really incredible. And you should go see plays and musicals in addition to great movies in your world. Yes, I agree with Joey. Go, go, go seek it out. Um, yes. uh, Siobhan, hey. Uh, I know we don't do plugs What's ourselves, up, but did but what's hey what's going on? Uh, do you have anything else to say before we wrap up the show? Uh, Joey, thank you very much for doing this. You're a good friend of mine, um, and uh, um, I value that friendship. And uh, I'm happy that you came here and were willing to do this. And you were such a great guest. I knew you would be. And uh, Marcelo, see you next week. See you next week. Hell yeah. I'd be honored to come on again. You know? Absolutely. Yes. Um, Best Animated Films Part 2. <laughs> where Siobhan no, continues to shit on Across the Spider-Verse. Thanks. Again, thanks, Joey. Uh, as always, Siobhan, a pleasure. See you next week. And folks listening, hey, see you at the movies. Nope. I never say that. All right, bye. Bye.